what's up, Birmingham? August the 19th, I will be at the Birmingham Theater. Hell yeah, that's right, damn what you heard. It's going down like that in a major way. You know how it goes down when I pull up at Birmingham. Shit just get crazy. I ain't even wanna say shit in this ad, but shit just get crazy. So look, make sure you click the link, hit the website, get the tickets, put your outfit on, pull up on me. One show on the Birmingham. One show. I'm keeping y'all in my rotation because y'all treat me like family when I come down there. Because Mississippi and Alabama kind of like the same thing, but different. So pull up on me, we'll talk about the difference. i see you there. Room like this nigga. That's talk why I room. said great, man. Man, man crazy. Yeah, they had to hit me with the uh breathing tube, get the to open up my lungs. I went to anaphylactic. Anaphylactic shock is when your when your uh windpipe and shit closed Close up. up. Yeah. They had to put a tube down your throat. Yeah, yeah. that's one when the mother gonna tell me, yeah, man, Chico went surgery. I was like, man, shut the fuck up. No, so they had to put a tube down your shit and open and that open bitch it up. back up. Yeah. Oh, you a little damn over a pretzel. One piece of pretzels now. That's it. And that's all it takes. So like I said, for me, it's different. Man, I got growing up with food allergy, Slim, like, I don't, it's so much shit I ain't never had. Niggas be like, nigga, you ain't never had a Reese's Snicker? Right. No. You ain't missing huh? shit. Yeah, you ain't, ain't never shit. had a Snickers? No, nigga. They delicious little motherfucker, but you ain't missing shit. No, they not. Yeah, you'll be singing it so hard to say goodbye. Right. You know what I mean? It's so hard to say goodbye, right. nigga. Hell nah, fuck that. Fuck them peanut butter cups. Nah, nigga, fuck peanut butter in general, nigga. I'm, that's, I'm beefing with that motherfucker. Damn. Nah, you can't even good. fuck with peanut butter brown women. No, that's different. Oh. Oh. That's different. Oh. I don't even know why you would just do that like that. that I, it hit my mind. How about yeah. you going to fuck white women? That's crazy. No, I don't hell do that. Oh, that's really that's nuts, too. You got to be the chocolate. No, yeah. chocolate. That's, that's nuts, Oreo. That's all like you prefer. Like the peanut prefer. butter chocolate. Yeah, Dang. I can do that. You know what I mean? I think it's time for you to play us some pimping, man. Uh-oh. Mm. That's it. Uh, that's what he likes. Yeah, he was. The whole that time we've been talking, that nigga been over there motherfucker like, the whole time we've been talking, that nigga been like, this nigga don't respect me. I'm about to drop this Zoom on this nigga. That, uh, what's that? That's that Commodore sound. Commodore sample, Zoom. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's back when Lionel Richie had the streets unlocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah, that nigga was the coldest. You feel me? You killed that shit. That's the type of shit we be on over here, man. We just be vibing and shit, yeah. just trapped out. Come on. Get it in. I'm Run on. y'all doing it for many moon. Come on. Oh, yeah. We've been doing this podcast shit before niggas knew what a podcast was. Fact. We really kind of defined what it was, you know, Fact. for urban podcasts, because it wasn't a whole lot of people Fact. out here. And everybody else really... just follows suit. Come on. You know, it's like, you niggas know, it's like, get in where you fit in. Mm. Nigga you know, there's a need. Yeah. Black people have voices, and we Coming need to discuss yeah. certain topics oh. and certain capacities. Nigga wants you know, next year. We need some niggas like nigga us who going to talk that shit and bring it real. Then we need some niggas out here giving bad relationship advice. Then we need some ladies giving their point of view on niggas giving bad relationship advice. Then we need some niggas and some women giving collective mm -hmm. bad advice. Right. Then we got to see some people who spiritually uplift us. Right. Some black positivity. Some motherfuckers who entertain us. Some people who mm. gonna tell us how to eat better and get this money. It's all you type of lanes that black people need to be in. Stars. And we in ours. Come out. Yeah. That's why we can move and do what we got wanna do because we ain't worried about what nobody else doing. Yeah. Hey, it's enough for everybody to get some. Yes. 
in a certain way. But we got to bring the integrity back, and we got to make sure that everybody got the resources that they need to be successful. Mm. Mm. Come on. And that's the whole point of this platform right here. That's why we don't just be bringing everybody through here, and we really focus right now on bringing nothing but ghetto legends. Mm. Now, people felt like the people said, you supposed to have been here. Who started? I said, I and then we been. look up, and I see you doing all these other podcasts, and I took that. that personal, and I hit you, and I said, Nick. He did take it personal. Don't yeah. go on nobody else shit without coming to the trap. He, he called me 1 o'clock in the morning. You see this shit? Do you see this shit? I'm like, bro, my eyes closed. What you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, he must be doing a favor for, some, for somebody, because we really know this nigga. Come on. Hey, I told you, since I've been trying to get over here. First of all, this shit is in the trap. Y'all niggas, it took me what, over an hour Come to on. get to this. Ain't nobody tell you to be way the fuck Come out on. there where you at? Where? No, no. Where we at? Mm-hmm. Where way you the fuck out there. We definitely way the fuck out there. You know what I mean? Y'all where we there. shoot that. Where the yeah, all the way. Is it? Ain't no way they charge you to go way out there. They had to ask you for a favor, because yeah. that's fucking far. Nigga, it's far. What happened to Tyler Perry, man? We ain't fucking, we ain't shooting that Tyler Perry. Nigga, on. that's the most popular motherfucking in uh, studio to shoot at in Atlanta. This motherfucker's booked up for years. Yeah. Marvel and all of them motherfuckers shoot over there. Okay, Tyler, we... I talked to Tyler, that nigga said, nigga, I can't even shoot my own shows over here. We can't do Central Stage no more? Center Stage. That, that, Center Stage? Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't big enough. And then, you know, they have venues, so they got yeah. shows and shit. Like, you got to block that shit out for a month. That shit. That was the latest. We were talking about that shit the other day. I said, We had a whole fucking club in the We had a room. party yeah. after every episode. That shit was like a I club. Used to do, I used to do that shit, too. I just. Liabilities. It's just like, I was yeah, like it wasn't happening. happening. Yeah. And then you start them stories. Not that, not that particular year. I mean, I'm just saying in general. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all it takes is one motherfucker shit. to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the but, way. But if you want to be technical, that was the latest. Oh, the most. Oh, my lord. I don't that know. Nah, I don't y'all know. niggas ain't been around. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I, can't say, say that I can't say. I can't say. Young niggas. After, 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 you well, no. You beat every last one of them. Yeah, well, well I say since they came saying, back. I don't know about the old they shit. shit. They shit in the beginning, too. Nah, but that don't even count. Well, nobody there to watch them. We was in high school. Niggas was in high school. All right, well, fuck it then. Without further ado, we got a very special ghetto legend in here with us today. Yeah. He got a long list of credits. He has long literally list. done everything that a nigga can do right. in life. Right. This man has an amazing life. He has at least 30 jobs. Right. Uh, very entertaining. Right. He gave all of us the opportunity to be better niggas. Right. So it's an honor and a privilege to have none other than. Then who? Nick Cannon. Oh, and yeah. Trap. All the way, man. Man, all it's way. about fucking time. God damn, OG, you all right. Right. I told y'all was coming. And you I know, knew we would leave work together. Nigga, to come here. We just did today. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I asked him. We was on set. You know what I mean? We was walking off at the last show. I said, Nick, man, when you come to the podcast? He was like, man, well, let's do it. Let's, let's shut it up. Let's do it. Right. Let's do it. That's what I'm telling you. You know, when nigga get the half pitch voice, you know this nigga. When he get the half pitch voice, I'm like, oh, he really coming. He's like, let's do it. Let's do it. First of all, you don't have shit to worry about on the 85 South Show. Every time you go on the podcast, you say some crazy shit. They get the internet all I'm riled up. I'm probably going to say some crazy shit here, too. All right. That well, cool. Fuck shit. it. That's on you. We're going to go viral. It's on you. <laughs> That's what we do, man. This suit, this suit loud as hell. Yeah. You know, I'm loud. That's why I don't give a fuck. I ain't never give a fuck. Why you wear them shades? I, I, I just want them. God damn, OG. Please, man. You don't like my shit? I do. I do because I got to go to work tomorrow. But... <laughs> Why do you have you wear them? You, you wear a lot of shades, but them these are well, your the, my YSLs. I love these shits, but I'm gonna tell you because it's 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 like when you know it's Clark Kent and Superman. Right. Like this is really the low key look. This is I gotta be up at five in the morning. This is late at night, turban, star shades, but I look different when I get paid millions of dollars on TV. Facts. So this is this is just this is the cover up shit. Where I just you wear them chilling. on TV too. But I, when you don't see me with glasses on, that's when I'm getting paid the most. Uh, okay. When so when you got glasses shit, on, that that means you don't really want to do it. Yeah, this the mascot. This the 
You know, you only keep the bag. You only can see my got. eyes when you're giving me millions of there dollars. It is. Ah, and Mercury, the rest yeah. of you niggas is, <laughs> is under the sus I just suspicion. <laughs> I don't know who this is I'm talking to. I might be sleep under these that's motherfuckers. Crazy. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Like we didn't, you know, it's so crazy to have you here, man. Because like I said, we came in this shit a decade ago. Like, and we this was crazy. like me and Los talk all the time, like just about that position that we was in, and just in life at that time, niggas right. was. Broke. I'm talking about just broke, <laughs> bro. I'm I remember. sending fifty, sixty dollars home and shit. Like, so for you being a person that you know, like you said, gave us an opportunity to be better niggas. Like, was that your intention yeah, for the man. whole time, or was it just like a something that you just was doing because, like you said, you a nigga that know how to get millions of dollars on television? I know. That's why. I, shoot, I built the platform for to give niggas opportunity. Like even when I, the early seasons, when it was Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, D-Ray, Atheon, like I was just to be like, look, I was on, I was doing movies and music and shit, but, and I had the, the relationship at Viacom, so I just was like, yo, let me create something to, to put the squad on, and it just started working. So it was, even by the time y'all came around, it was, that, that's, that's the MO, you know what I mean? Like we just gotta make sure, and we were just keeping our eye out for, Cats who, you know, really had the sauce and really had the work ethic right. to, I mean, look what y'all built. Y'all built, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's, that's the beauty of it all. When you get, when you say, yo, it's a lot out there to go get and motherfuckers really pay attention and go get it, but, that's what it's here for. But the thing is, though, like, you had the show and it went away and you didn't have a necessity to bring it back. You didn't nah. need it. Nah. So what, that's what I'm saying as far as what made you want to bring, like, the, 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 Go that route again. Yeah, man. I was I was at the crib. I was married. I was chilling. You know what I mean. I'm gonna be honest. I was, I had to start because I started paying attention to the, the battle rap world, and I would see cats like Khan and, and Clips and Hitman, and I just became a fan of it. And I was like, yo, that's that's really what we used to do on Wild and Out, but they took it and really just cultrified it all the way and took took it. Took it to a whole new new level with the the level of talent and even how how authentic and grimy it was. I mean, obviously niggas have been battle rapping since you know Ooh. the Cold Cush Brothers yeah. and Cool Mo D way. and all you know uh, Treacherous Three. But the when when we put it out there in the earlier seasons of Wild and Out, we made it fun and you know it was me and Kanye and you know like it was really awesome like paying homage to like the backpack type shit and then. They took battle rap culture and like turned it into something, and then shit after that, I was like, yo, I should, I should do this again with a whole new generation. And I was inspired by that. I was like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna flip it like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was, I was, you know, I was running the the teen division at Nickelodeon at the time, so I was already over there. And even at one point, I was thinking like, like, let me just do like a wilding out for teenagers or for kids, like on some more educational type stuff. So then. I kind of stopped developing that. And I was like, I'm gonna just bring it back, and thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Boy, appreciate you for that, nigga. Yeah, God, damn. And then that's what we did. We brought mm -hmm. that shit back. I mean, shit. But see, I and like y'all two was on, you know, the first iteration, and then yeah, you know, two t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, two yeah, yeah. t-shirt, two t-shirt, uh, uh, the 25 cent bag of chips. Yeah. That, but you know what though? Like now, being there and being, you know, one of the well, how many of us left? It's just me, you, like five, E Man, and, and Khan, Khan, right? From that, that's from it. that original season five. How many people was that? Four. Hmm. Yeah, it's four. Yeah. It's only four of us. From Shit, that it was. Well, last time we took a picture, it was more than four people. Motherfuckers, <laughs> this, this is be disappearing. Yeah, but it's like that process. Then, like I use that as an example all the time because that was like gladiator school Hell yeah. in regards to the time that we came in it's like it's different now because you know the, the platform has grown and it took on a life of its own but when right. we came in Corey and them niggas was like fuck is this nigga yeah. nigga and you had to prove yourself in a way to where it wasn't it wasn't no writers it wasn't nobody yeah. to help you it was right. just niggas and the comedians was looking at y'all like from like, especially like Spanky. And Yo, I was, yeah, we boy, you remember that shit? Yeah, they, I mean for real, bro. Like it was they crazy. Really, they really fuck with y'all niggas. Nah, they was like, man, who are these niggas? Yeah, I wouldn't say not not in front of us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but their opinion never mattered. If you really gonna gauge 
what you about to do off of what a nigga like that say. Right. That, that ain't <laughs> never been my MO. Right. Them I, niggas I, ain't never impressed me. <laughs> this nigga here. And then this nigga came in and took their whole energy <laughs> and started doing the same shit. He hate all the new niggas too. <laughs> <laughs> Who is there to like? <laughs> right. You can't name a nigga in there that I was wrong about. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you don't like nobody. Nigga, they, they not likable people. <laughs> you just be finding, you found a random nigga with a towel on his head. <laughs> that nigga was, he was, uh, Guru no, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He was Before terrible. It was called TikTok. It was called Musical.ly. Hey, you man, you should have left his ass on that. I tell no, you that. No, I no. talk about why. It was a kid. He was a young boy. <laughs> I don't know what the, the fuck it was. Told, uh, I forgot what his name was. <laughs> Who the one you man? Oh, yeah. the Christian. That was yeah. the nigga. Do you see how you don't yeah. even remember the nigga name? Sorry. That's what I'm talking about. You should have left his ass on that app. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, Lowe's well, don't man, like he nobody. Your whole got personality that is tied a towel around your head. Hey, he, that nigga, was, and I used to do some weird shit. He used to like put his legs behind his head. Why are you head? impressed by shit like that? <laughs> because I'm gonna tell you why. This nigga is an asshole, bro. Like <laughs> that this should not, nigga, no, fuck that. That should not be enough to be on <laughs> Wild and Out. No, you gotta <laughs> understand. This nigga, I learned the first workshop how much of an asshole this nigga was <laughs> at his core. Like, people see the nigga, that glass and shit, like, whoever up under there, that's who that nigga really is. <laughs> like, nigga, we in the workshop the first day. The first day, we walking around and shit, or everybody walking around, this nigga got a shocker. <laughs> you see how he laughed like a Batman villain? Like, like, like this shit. shocking motherfucker? Bruh. Come, Come on, man. I'm Nav Reed, and this is the Family Business. I'm Clayton English. You know what time it is. I'm Money Bad Mafia, and we're doing perks in the VIP. Man, me, you got to. Me and Greek. Bro, no, okay, we got to talk uh, about the show first. Yeah. You don't go straight to yeah, 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 yeah. so, the I told you all that shit at the October end. October 1st yeah. at Zanis. October 1st, Zanis Family Business Tour. Thank you. You know what it is. Tickets, 85 South Show. 85 South Show. Dot com. Oh. You get the tickets. For the meet and greet afterwards, and you know it's, it's not gonna be no regular. It's meet gonna and be greet. the freakiest shit you come ever on, seen in your life. Well, we popping perks. No, 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 no. Ass, we popping everything. Ladies, ladies, just uh. come to the meet and greet, and it's really gonna be a greet and meet. It ain't just for huh? It's gonna be a greet. Man, and my player partners, uh, y'all come. Y'all about to play partners. Y'all come be. back there to the VIP two meet and greet. Oh man, it family up, business, it's family right? Family we playing business. spades in there, yeah. domino, drinking plenty of liquor. <laughs> the family business tour and what money bag does is completely separate. <laughs> <laughs> He's more like an independent contractor. <laughs> I'm a sole proprietor. We are not. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And y'all know we coming to Nashville August 19th. We gonna be at City Winery. Doors open at 6. Show starts at 8. And guess what, y'all? It's my birthday week. So y'all know this show finna be super lit. We got some special guests coming through. Okay, so we wanna know this. Is there a way you can cheat, but it's respectful? It's respectful. It's what she's saying, yes. I'm she's saying, yes. What you say, no? No? Yes. yes. I see mostly yeses. I see mostly, okay. what I'm saying. We are gonna party so hard, y'all. This is gonna be our best show yet. Cause last time we went to Nashville, we cut up. This time, it's my birthday week. We really about to cut up. So I'm telling y'all, get your tickets right now. August 19th, City Winery. See y'all soon. Period. You don't want people to know that this is the person that you're attached to. Cause soon as, especially with me, what I'm dealing with now. Yeah, yeah. You know that I'm you blowing, famous. I'm blowing up and shit like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want them to get no pussy off me. Because hold on, nigga. we want to fuck with nigga. nigga until they see you with the oh, nigga. Man. Hold on, we want to fuck with a nigga until they see you with him. Oh, then they want to try him out or be acting like they fucking with you or some shit like that. That's what these bitches do. And niggas yeah. take advantage. Some niggas take advantage of They feel like they the man. You know what I'm saying? Balls don't got bigger. Dick don't got bigger. Boy, pipe down, nigga. <laughs> pipe down. I'm the catch. I'm the prize. Slow you roll. Hey, hey yo, Lola, you yeah. agree with that? Hell yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't post my nigga if he went missing on a milk carn. That's <laughs> 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 for sure. Girl, stop. You ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> We gon' find him. We'll find him. We, we know where he is. We at. know where he is. Y'all ain't got to know. Uh -uh. I'm, learn, I'm learning right now. You know, I'm old. I'm getting tips. The nigga was trying There's to play. Game, he was trying to play a game <laughs> where you sit in a death row electric chair. Right. And you wrap a rap. dog collar around your neck, nigga. And if, and you, if fuck you fuck up, up the rap, they shock your neck. <laughs>
I'm like, bro, what the fuck did I sign up for? I don't know if I want to make it this bad. <laughs> this thing. That like, shit was funny as fuck. See? Why they go through with it? Because the it's a standards of practice, they didn't want niggas to get hurt and shit like that. I'm glad you found me on the app. I read my audition. He said, shit, just do something. It was funny. I'm like, what you want me to do? He's See, like, I don't know, nigga, do something. I'm I, like, shit. If I wouldn't, if I, I every, everyone ain't going to be gold. It's some fool's gold out this there. This nigga was already proven by the time he got on. Wow. Uh, well, nobody, nobody gave, nobody gave me a shot like how he said. He said, I remember it was you, Nye, and Shelby. Yeah. At Atlanta Comedy Theater, nigga. And they was in the, you know, Nye giving him producer look. Shelby just, <laughs> being Shelby. Bro, and I didn't like, even. Oh, just do something. I didn't even have a wilding out audition. Nigga was outside, outside, outside talking, talking, talking shit, shit about. Mm, outside. I was like, who is this nigga in the motherfucking old school talking shit about niggas? Bring that nigga inside. And that's what we got. That's, that's great. Nigga, that's I, me, it's still the same nigga to this day. I've met this nigga that's two, how you got years, shot. two <laughs> years ago. Yeah, man, all y'all niggas is terrible. He you know, everybody in line, they was You ugly. They don't like you. You too old. I right. was on them niggas' ass. Listen, the, I didn't met this nigga two years before Wild Out even came back. He right. was doing a Fresh Faces of Comedy show yep. in New York at Gotham Comedy Club, and Dolly was working with yeah. him at the same time. Him, Pete Davidson. Me, Pete, and all us came. You and, are a new Pete. Yeah, I've been new Pete, you mm. know what I mean? But um, I came to do the show. And when I came in to do the show, the white man that owned the club was like, yeah, I don't know who you are, bro. So you can't say this. You can't say that. You can't say I'm like, nigga, what the fuck type shit is this? Right. Bro, so one I, day Pete sent me a message said, man, I would call you, but I don't have a phone. <laughs> Recently? That was the last time I talked to him. <laughs> he said I would call you, but I don't have a phone. He damn sure said it. Why the That's fuck you said it? I don't know, but, you know, I didn't even know if I should respond. Or if he was gonna get it, yeah, I feel. You. I don't know what he sent it on. Right. <laughs> but so I'm, I nervous as a motherfucker, right? So I'm like, man, everything that I thought I was gonna say, this man just told me I can't say. Right. So I go outside. My creative process always, you know, I duck off, talk to myself. So I'm right. outside, walk around in the circle, talking to myself. This nigga pull up, him and Dorian, pull up, see me outside talking to myself, just look like, eh, hey, New York. <laughs> walk right in. I go on stage, do my set, I come off, he stopped me and say, hey man, you, you just was outside making all that shit you just talked about up just now, wasn't you? Because I just was talking about what just happened. Right. Like I got on stage and talked about the white man telling me I couldn't do my jokes. And right. You let a white man tell you you couldn't do your jokes? I didn't know joke? no better. <laughs> I didn't what? know no better. Y'all niggas disappoint me. I'm over there the I've been, been doing comedy for two years at that time. Fuck. And I'm going up to New York for the first time, not doing this. Did you this nigga here, boy? Boy, that crazy. This nigga here is. Man, what type of shit is that? Gargamel off the oh, earth, my nigga. That's shit you should have said. That's what I said when I got on stage. You should have said everything he told you not to say. That would have you would have ripped is, that nigga, motherfucker. It's so talented, and that's what I recognize. Yeah, nigga, yeah, he stopped him. Freestyled and, and rocked that motherfucker. Man, he let a white man tell him not. <laughs> he ain't gonna let that go. No, I mean, it's hey, at least I'm. That might have been Puerto Rican. That's that's right. Right. Well, that, no, he was a, he was a white man. Not to say. See, like I said, I'm, I'm still like learning. You. I'm learning the comedy game. How the fuck you gonna be a comedian and you went prepared for this shit all week and then the motherfucker say, hey, nigga's brilliant. Don't say that. I like that one got a job. This nigga, this nigga acting like a nigga, like I tell a white man told me not to say nothing the last weekend. Mississippi. Nigga, that was in 2010. I was doing white. open like, mics in Greensboro, just, North Carolina. Like, nigga. Nigga. Yeah. The only yeah. fuck is wrong with you? And he yeah. just wanted yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, and I came up and did the shit, nigga. I get off stage, Nick was like, man, was you just making all that up? I was like, yeah, man. He said, man, keep doing that. I'm around some of the best in the game. They can't do what you just did. Yeah. And then we went to... I don't know if you remember this. We went to Six Flags the next day. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went to, was crying. And yeah, shit. we went to Six Flags the next day. She was day. scared of roller coasters. Yeah, she was scared of roller coasters. This nigga made her get on a roller coaster. This is an asshole, bro. I've seen this nigga at his core. So, I'm you a terrible I'm, person I'm, like that? I'm nigga, just like that nigga. You made me eat a fish. What you mean, just like me? Yeah. yeah. I ain't no. You terrible, nigga. Nigga just called you uh, Gargamel. I can't even. I don't want to hear that shit. He got white man talking about this shit. What the? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm evil. Yeah, if that's the case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but 
you know, I, I'm watching you at that time. Mind you, I'm an all the way nobody. I'm just a nigga that's with a nigga that's with a nigga at that time. <laughs> with but too we, many niggas. No, it was, yeah, I was the last nigga. I'm with, I, <laughs> we just I'm, met with, nigga. I'm with the assistant of the assistant, nigga. I'm like, ooh, Ain't I'm no just, seat. Stay let, me, let me stay back here so I don't overstay my welcome. I don't want to, you know, do too much. So I'm watching him just as observing, and I'm seeing him go, you know, he VIP and everybody, they yelling on the speaker, don't hang over the rails, and people going crazy trying to take pictures and shit. And I'm looking like, man, this is what success looks like in this game. Right. Can I deal with this shit? And at that point, I was like, yeah, nigga, I can deal with this shit. And, you know, at that point, I was like, nigga, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. That is just a, the craziest shit I ever seen with this nigga. A white lady handed him a baby and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what? That was before the kid. I'm telling you, this. <laughs> We was out somewhere and the lady just handed this nigga a baby and he was like, who the fuck baby is this? A white baby? A white baby. I know that pissed and you off. And it wasn't mine. It no, wasn't that pissed you off. You handed that white lady that No, I was baby. like, man, this, I, I didn't even know shit like this happened in America. <laughs> I ain't never seen that shit before. Where was, where was y'all at? trust a black man with your baby. Where was y'all at? Man, I don't, it must have been on one of them tour shows or something. Where was on tour? Yeah, she wasn't just coming to give me a baby, nigga. Was... Our latest tour was that. Was, was that first. Bro, people ask me all the time, what's the joke that went too far? Like, have, in the whole history of Wild and Now. The one that went, I don't, I don't think there is one that went too far. Niggas done been talk, talked about me dying. Niggas done talked about my baby mama. It was like, I, I don't but really that's, give a shit. That's I got, one of the I things. Can't, I got a thick skin. You can't say nothing to really offend That's what me. I always give you credit for. One of the main things that I give you credit for in our journey, you know, being, you know, people that you gave an opportunity to, a lot of niggas that's in your position to give you the opportunity to stand back and see what you do. Yeah. And just let you go out and just, you know, so a nigga not attached to it. Like, oh, he's some shit? Ah, well, I mean, hey, <laughs> right, you right. know what I mean? Catch you when I catch you. But you stood beside us the whole time and allowed time. us to use a nigga that was already a superstar. Yeah. You know, it let us come up in that regard. That's, you that's, talk about me. That's true generational wealth. I right. just want to see niggas win. I mean, yeah. That's you know. what it is. I mean, if you really be on say television you about that. for ten years, hey, hey. and y'all that took it beyond television. You feel me? And hey, we created this energy from from being and, over there. Hell yeah, you movies see? and fucking record labels, all that shit. Y'all killing it. Car, you, eighty five stuff ain't a record label yet. Yeah. yeah. How about the same? Yeah, yeah. we bullshit. Yeah, yeah, we about Hell, to say three terrible rappers. <laughs> Three terrible rappers. Fuck it. Hey. Huh. Some niggas we believe in. That, that's you know, all that matters. I'm not getting no terrible rapper. Fuck it. Everybody else do it. We ain't getting no terrible rapper. Who gonna invest the money? You gonna invest your part of the money? I ain't doing it. <laughs> fuck it. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna cut that shit off and tell that boy go home. <laughs> Cause you gifted though. No. Like you want somebody to be able to do See, shit at your the same level. Kind of no, 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 no. See, no. we're the I'm same kind of terror. That's how you start off. That's yeah. his goal. We gonna find some terrible. <laughs> no, hell no. We can find some niggas that can at least got talent that want to do this shit. He like, no. no. Let's find some motherfuckers who don't even care about this shit. Right. <laughs> what? And then he just gonna That's talk all that shit, shit to me and this nigga <laughs> and just do exactly what he said this nigga been doing for 10 years. See, find you, some you terrible niggas. Terrible niggas. He, played, he did us the Jedi mind trick shit. You know what I'm saying? See, he really saying that's what I've been doing is finding <laughs> terrible niggas. <laughs> what? You saying some niggas that can't even rap better than me and Chico? Who? Nigga, name them. <laughs> Y'all niggas do more than rap, though. Oh, man, I want to hear that shit. just dedicate their life to that shit. That's what it is. Y'all dedicated your life to being well, bigger no, than rap. We didn't dedicate our life to shit. This is part of what we do. But this is your life. Nah, this is just like one what 99. What you dedicated your life to, Lo? Pimping. <laughs> Don't act like you didn't know this shit. The Mac and, and the pimping is what uh, got me in the cool. game. Talk to it him. was the gift of gab. You the instigator and the motivator. If I couldn't convince these motherfuckers that I'm better than what they thought I was, none of this shit exists. The rejuvenator. I pimp this whole situation. If they second guess you, then use a hater. They come think on. this show is about a fucking interstate. Uh. Yeah. Nigga, what? come on. You act <laughs> like you don't see the pimping. Nah, nigga, I've been seeing it. They done fucked up and let me get a whole building with the square footage with security. Uh. Cool. Ain't no telling you know, what really happened. They start pulling on their shit. This is it. Look at the couch. Yeah. 
I'll they still could have got a new one. No, clean that one. Because uh. we bringing nothing but ghetto royalty through here. Uh. We want niggas to feel like they at their auntie house. Uh. Right. Come on, man. You pimping the game. Look at this floor. You undedicated your life to it. We done yet. Uh. They was about to put a Walmart over here, but we told them no. This supposed to be in Walmart. Come no, on, man. We no, man, I don't do that. I don't have them people coming back Walmart. over here and be like, wait a minute. <laughs> hold up, hold up. We were supposed to put a Walmart right there. This Y'all nigga scared of Walmart. Great. I didn't even know it. We you got that? Look, I don't look. No disrespect. We ain't scared of Walmart. I won't let a white man tell me. We ain't over Target and the rest of the motherfuckers. You feel what I'm saying? That's all the same. We'll rap about that later. Yeah, we'll rap about that. Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Today we are welling out with none other than Nick Cannon, the most controversial nigga in the game. People only look at the good shit that he do and they ignore all the controversial shit that he be doing. You gotta be likable, though. Every time you look up, he in some shit. As long as they like you, they, they'll, they'll forgive you. Nick, you be wildin' though. I said, hey, wildin' out. You be flirting with TMZ ladies and shit. You can't just be out here saying this kind of shit, Nick. You do it. No, but nigga, you Nick, though. You be having, you be doing the most. They give a fuck about you. I'm in a comfortable position in my career where I can say shit and don't nobody give a fuck. You say the wrong shit, it's on the news in the morning. (laughs) They canceling deals. Can't nobody drink Sprite no more and shit. Don't never gauge your life off the shit I do. You are way more successful than me. I should never be the gauge in your decision making. But uh, you always tell me you said, yo, just hire you to pay, pay you to just keep a real nigga around. And I guess you found some other niggas. I was not suggesting nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the why you listen wrong. That ain't you elevated beyond that position. Now you gotta hire real niggas to be around you to keep you solid and thorough. Yeah, I am not there yet, right. Nick. I am the real nigga in my life. I take all the heat for my own decisions. As you but should. your ass, you out here just fucking going crazy in real life, nigga. I mean, I'm enjoying it, though. You probably this, shit. This, 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 How many this, TV shows are now? Shit, I stopped counting. You stopped counting. So what's the most exciting TV show? I know it's out. I mean, I love Wild and Out. That's my baby. But, you uh, just saying that because we on there. I seen how happy you be on that Mad Singer shit. You smiled yeah, the, the whole fucking like time. The like that. You be smiling the whole I fucking smile time, I take these goddamn glasses off. And See, yeah. that's the shit. <laughs> Nah, I love the nigga. You really care about the accent? I remember you was doing America's Got Talent, nigga. That nigga dressing room looked like the stage we shoot on. I was like, God damn, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you. What's the most exciting? Like, lift his day? arms up for a motherfucker to come fit him for a suit while he's standing right there. I said, yo, they put his clothes man, the nigga went like this. That's, he was like, what's up, Shane? <laughs> and a motherfucker came and dressed this nigga. I said, oh, shit. That's money, money. Bro, this shit different all the way. That's uh, money, money. So what you, what you say is the most exciting show for you then? Uh, ever? I mean, I got to say it's well and out. That's just real wow. shit. That's the most freedom. I mean, one, because I run it. Right. And I can pretty much do whatever I want to do, and I created it. Right. Like from working on the logo to making all the beats to creating the games to picking the cast, like, and then for it to be, nigga, we got restaurants now, we got board games. Right. It's a franchise. We got motherfucking tours and travel all over the world. Like, I, I haven't done that in any other capacity. You know what I mean? Like when, when you take something that started in here and then it literally becomes an iconic legacy for decades. Right. Yeah. That's a motherfucking I use Wild and Out, I use Wild and Out, Wild and Out as a blueprint for every show and everything that I go on. Because I always say, well, I know Wild and Out from when it first came on, it was rough. I mm. caught the end part of the Gladiator School, nigga. Yeah. When I found out y'all niggas was friends, I was like, damn, Carlos done left me I'm by myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this nigga so groovy. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, man. It's crazy you say that, Fly, because I'm like, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a level of talent, man, that that you got to have to do that shit to the level that it got to be done in. And when you came, it was different. Like when we first met, that's the first thing you said. When we came, did me and this nigga downstairs in the lobby, reminiscing, like, nigga, we back again and they gave us another one. 
This nigga come downstairs and say, yeah, what's up, nigga? So you met your real friend and left me, huh? I'm like, oh, you a wild nigga in real life. What's up with you, Slim? But that's the type of shit that you can feel where a nigga gonna be able to blend into that environment because right. that shit, like this nigga come do the show and then this nigga, would, at that time, he was leaving and going to shoot America's Got Talent right after. Yeah. And so it was us that was creating the environment that right. you come into. And we had to fight to be able to establish like, they was trying to give me three shows my first season. They was like, yeah, you're here for three. But they been lying on me since I first walked in the building. Oh, I remember that situation that happened with you. <laughs> yeah. What happened with you? As soon as we got to the set, bro, the people who put the lights in the yeah. in the ceiling, uh -huh. they were smoking a, a joint. And they thought it was me. They blamed Carlo. Really? Yeah. Bro, we just walked in the building. These motherfuckers been smoking all day. That's crazy. Damn. Been handed out for you. They been handed out for me. Yeah, they, they but scared not? you. Literally, literally I don't know with the shit I've ever been on, and I use it as a baby. Like, can't nobody even say nothing bad about Wild and Out or do no, no sour shit about Wild and Out because we use it as a platform and we use it as a solid foundation to see how we know how a successful TV show works. Not only do we know how a successful TV show work, the energy that we have cultivated over the years. Yeah. And like I said, when we what first I love got there, it, it was like, it get to show motherfuckers how much shit you can actually do. Right. As a talent. Yeah. Right. Because you have to do a lot of shit that don't have shit to do with shit you might do, but especially actually, if you're on the music a, or you fuck with the comedy or you right. fucking, you know, you're a comedian and you have to fuck with the music. But it actually became a, a, a workspace where people was looking forward to go to. Hell yeah. All right, why am I called you? They called you too. All right, bitch, I mean, we got two weeks to go to LA. Bitch, we go shoot this shit. Have fun with the bro. Go up here and talk some shit. That's what it's And we gone. It's just you know fun. what I'm saying? Like it ain't even that like shit was it, different it, it at the time though. Like remember, them, remember them times where we was waiting on them. I remember I ain't gonna say to say the name on here because I don't know if they what it was the old regime. They might be working for somebody else now. <laughs> we was waiting on them them pickup notices. Oh you yeah. would be waiting, nigga. You should be oh yeah. You ain't never had to wait on no pickup notice. Nigga, yes I did. Which, why not? Nah, you, you had to. The they they was. Worried about whether or not they was gonna replace you every season? Well, I mean, we had to. Is the show coming back? Is it? Is oh, did the yeah. entire show get picked oh, up? Oh, of course. But that see, the, the our pickup notice was after they had already knew the show right, was coming right, back. Right, right. Like yeah. you had already be like, yeah, we coming back on another one. And three weeks then passed. You like, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Just waiting right. for the call. They're waiting for the call. Like that shit was different, but in a sense of. We are, that's what made us love it so much in my in my opinion because we really had to work. Hell yeah. Be there. Like there was no, you know what I mean, there was no leeway. There was no olive branch in regards to, you know, what you do when you get on that stage, like when them lights turn on. And mind you, and I wanna ask you this, like, how is it different for you? Because in my opinion, you you've surrounded yourself with some with talent that you'll always be able to say, man, I I found that person, but you have it. Do you ever had a pressure coming up and performing the way that we feel when we get them emails when we on the show? Does it does Hell it affect yeah, you the same I way? Keep the brand going. You know what I mean? Now there's an expectation, and even when it comes to like, I don't even like saying like, yo, I, I found that person or I put that person on. Really, it's the platform that I created that allow y'all to take it. I think I mean, Cat Williams even said that shit the best. He was like, wilding out is like a diving board. He was like. It's niggas that's gonna come and jump on that motherfucker and do flips and right. do some Olympic shit right. and soar. And there's gonna be some motherfucker that come bounce on that motherfucker and fall the fuck off. Right. So it's like, long as I keep it stable enough for niggas to continue to launch, right. Right. then that's what we that, appreciate. We, it's, it's, the, it's the community pool. It's okay. Niggas come, come jump off and, and soar with that shit. Well, I ain't gonna cap. I be telling people all the time I put you on because I know you would never say that. <laughs> My like, girl, my big homie. when I came in the game <laughs> and we did that first season, Nick was he was through with it. I when you like, start doing comedy, man, nineteen. Cause you an old young nigga. Seventy-six. No, <laughs> I started doing comedy in '05. So yeah, you a young nigga. I'm an old. But you carry yourself like an old nigga. But I was raised around. I'm from Mississippi, so I'm automatically you, sixty. So you you came out yeah, the so. wound at thirty-seven. Yeah, it you was. Know. Nigga, when you came out, you nigga. Like me. Yeah, I'm yeah. old. Yeah. All everybody was old. I grew up around my great grandma and my yeah. real granddaddy. 
He's talking about my real, my like real granddad. Y'all got that old nigga God, I got to see, my real I got to see my family. But my granddaddy could have been even greater, but he never had no draws that fit. All his draws was too big. Oh, <laughs> wait, that, wait, but he you never. Wanted, but you wanted him to have the tight. No, I'm just saying, like some days you would go over my granddaddy house and he'll answer the door in his draw. That's what granddaddies do. And it was like, granddaddy, if your draws was the right size, ain't no telling what you could achieve. <laughs> you just never had a real I fair think all chance. All granddaddies had baggy draws. Mm. I think they only made boxes in mm. one size back no, then. These were not even boxes. These were well, boxes. These uh -huh. just draws. I said, well, this boy, he's 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 like. <laughs> Saggy ass, da 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 da. Yes, just oh, really yeah, yeah, yeah. draw. Yeah, yeah. He no. could have been great. These yeah. draws were at least nigga three sizes come. too big. Should have yeah. come his draws. Nigga. I don't know. I can't even fit his waistline. I'm from the That's city. I don't saying. know my granddaddy. I ain't never met that nigga. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I was not raised around, 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 around him. My daddy this was. nigga had a tough life, man. <laughs> man, that nigga, hey, listen. People think, that nigga think he all jokes. That nigga done been through some shit. Oh, he got some real gangsters or anything shooting. Yeah, you know I mean, that but that right ain't, there? that ain't, that's the, that's the beauty of being. You're going to blow his cover. Oh, sorry. Uh, nah, nah. This nah, nigga don't. a real one. Nah, you know, it's, it's, that's the, that's the, the beauty of being in this position. Like, to get to this is the escape yeah. all of that shit. Like, right. I just did niggas. a show in, in D.C. at the MGM, and I went back through my old neighborhoods just to show, like, it's different now. Yeah. Right? Gentrified Fuck now. Uh, Whole but, Foods over there? Oh, it's coming. Oh. You know what I mean? It's a lot of white people waiting on it, but. <laughs> For me, it's like I don't, I've escaped that environment, yeah. but I'm of the environment. Yeah. But when you really of it, you don't got to walk around I'm like, you, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to walk around you like you the toughest I'll nigga or you with none of it. Proudly, man. Yeah, nah, nigga, I'm, I, didn't, I didn't beat the game, Slim. <laughs> like, yeah, when I had to wake up every day and be outside without a choice. Nigga, like, what? That's not, that's not something that, you know, I, I'm proud that I was able to get out of it, but yeah. I'm also not like, yeah, nigga. Guess what I did before, <laughs> hey. man. Fuck all that. But hey. the thing is, for me, getting to a position where we at now, is like I look back on coming into that slot or that diving board, like you said, with nothing. Right. Yeah. And like really, me and this nigga, man, like we came in together, and he said some shit to me at our audition, uh, that our, our first workshop when we was doing that last audition, that group audition that we yeah, did. See who that nigga came same. up and said something to me that rang, rings true to this day. Some of the realest shit ever. Like, this nigga walked up to me because we knew each other prior. He was like, right. man, I don't know what these niggas great do. But we great get on TV. And I've been telling you that them niggas been garbage since even before y'all hit me. Everybody. That's what I've been saying. Nigga I done never changed. Everyone. Yo, All that, of them. You, you been the same Kobe, nigga since. Kobe Bryant the of Cutlass, the game. Nigga. Kobe Bryant. Fuck him. Put him on the court. This nigga don't if like they no make it to He don't like none of the older niggas either. <laughs> He's like, he's the grab, but that's why the nigga What's the, the difference grab? between new garbage and old garbage? <laughs> the smell. Still garbage. <laughs> the smell. The Still old garbage. garbage stink worse. Man, it's the old <laughs> garbage, garbage and new garbage. Might trick Who you. do you fuck with other than these two niggas right here? What do you mean other than these two? You don't, don't need nobody. but two motherfuckers. <laughs> I already proved that. <laughs> People who have a lot of See, friends don't niggas, have none. You came up in this stand-up game with a lot of niggas. You don't fuck with none of them? It's not that I don't fuck with them. But do you understand that these niggas look at what I do with my hard work and feel like I don't fuck with them? Because you don't. Nah, no, it's niggas, not even that. It's they had the same opportunity they did. to All be the same these niggas on But because you know, y'all I mean y'all watch the other platforms and the mm -hmm. niggas be coming up with all of these conspiracy theories on the comedy hypes and all of that. Like, and it's like, it's see, you or whoever else got a podcast and you know trying to emulate what y'all done built. It's like a lot. There's a lot of people that feel like yo, you y'all the throne because they, they, they authentically don't fuck with each other. They not, you can't just when get you just on camera. But niggas. this is what I'm saying. You can't just get on camera and pretend to be friends. People gonna see through that shit. Right. Right. That's why that they shit. fuck with us. We don't always agree. Yeah. They be with the shit sometimes and I don't be with the shit sometimes. Nah. Sometimes the shit I be with, they be that's, like, Lose this your shit. That's hey, that's real. That's, that's the, real that's, family, that's the family homie shit. But that exactly. come from the environment right. that we come up out of, which, you know, being in Wild and Out. Like when we came in. 
nigga, had to what, what helped you me. You had to find a family. You're going to be by your motherfucker. To this day, I still do shit the same way I did when I came in in 2013. Nigga, I'm yeah. ducked off over here. Because right. there's too much shit going on in the environment right. for me to be comfortable. Right. There's too many unnecessary conversations. <laughs> Niggas is eating lunch with the wild and out girls acting like they don't know them your hoes. It's like, <laughs> like, bro, I don't, I don't, I don't, I never yeah, that understood That made you it. choke, huh? That made you choke. You <laughs> thought we weren't gonna bring it up, Nick? Like, crazy as hell. I don't. I never got it. Like, I've never got. Like, I've never Stupid. understood. Never I've never understood it, bro. Like, I've never, I've never understood that type of. That's you know crazy. what I mean? Like, I always, I always had to find a niche to be comfortable because I don't. I don't They're do well funny. in environments where I see shit going on. I'm, I'm. I'm different than him in the sense that I ain't got to yeah. say nothing. Right. I just see it and be like, that's crazy. And go this about my gonna way. On. He going to say something. This nigga <laughs> will go in off in a prayer. <laughs> like, in a, this nigga, in nigga the come out. Prayer. And the, he be great do the prayer. They be like, yeah, man, y'all do it great. Stop lying, nigga. <laughs> it was like, lose. <laughs> Hey man, it's Clayton English, man. We we in the middle of summer. You know what? I mean, you probably want to go to Miami. You might want to go to Mexico somewhere real tropical. How you gonna talk to these ladies if you can't speak the Spanish? Don't worry about me. I'm Sabado Domingo. You know what I'm saying? I speak all the ladies' languages. All right, that's love. But if you really want to talk to them, you gotta speak what they speak, and that's why I'm learning Spanish, man. And how am I learning Spanish? With Babbel, and you can too. Babbel can teach you to start speaking a whole new language in as little as three weeks. That's right, you can be speaking a whole new language in three weeks, and hey man, it's gonna stick with you. And why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or using one of these little language apps that's nothing more than a little leapfrog game, get on Babbel and get to speaking, man. Quick 10 minute lessons, they designed by experts. They're gonna get you saying all the shit, so you're not just saying, ooh, mommy, mommy culo. You're not just saying dumb shit, right? You actually gonna be able to hold something down. You might be able to, you know what I mean? You, 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 you. That's Spanish too. That's Spanish too, but I spoke it so you couldn't hear it. Wait till I get my shit together. You gonna see me with so many Venezuelans, Costa Ricans, Ecuadorians. Who else speaks Spanish? Spanish. We always leave out Spain. But now, nah, yeah, get your, get, get your language together, man. Get your mouthpiece right. Get your mouthpiece international. Get multilingual with Babbel, man. Get 55% off Babbel at babbel.com slash 85 South. That's 55% off your subscription. Spell B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash 85 South. And then you know rules and restrictions apply. Hey, what's up? This is Carlos Miller, and this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. That's right, people. If you want to get your first month free, go to bluechew.com and use the promo code 85 South. I'm telling you, man, it's getting hot out here in these streets and you want to keep it hot out here in your sheets. Go to bluechew.com and get you some because you can make love to your old lady for a long, long time. Even if you've been making love a long time, you can make love a little bit longer. So go to bluechew.com, use promo code 85 South. First month's free. That's because I paid for your first month. I know you wanted to try it. Man, go to this website. I'm tired of telling you about it. It's some of the greatest stuff on earth, from what I was told. Go use it, chew it, and do it. That's what they said. Chew it and do it. Chew it, then do it. Then do it, do it. Do it again. Then chew another one. Hopefully enough time has passed where you can chew another one. I'll get back with you. I got a date. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the podcast. I'm trying to motivate the young people. Man, fuck these niggas. They ain't gonna be here next season. Why you give these internet niggas a chance? Why do you? <laughs> that nigga be old and grumpy, boy. Yeah. I swear, Why boy. Fuck, man. Oh, he grumpy now. He's young and grumpy. Man. Why? 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 I, because I want to give people opportunities, Lo. Nick, I want to be. I want them Nick, to get on the are... diving board and soar. Right. Nick, what is the criteria these days? <laughs> we have this conversation. No, what is the criteria? Every, every year, fucking season. Because you are lowering the standards so far. 
You used to have to be good at something. You, nigga, this nigga came out. Don't y'all use him. Thing. Stop that shit. That nigga is amazing. Just, he been in movies. Justine. He can read. Justine came after y'all. I can read. What the fuck? <laughs> he can read. <laughs> they got niggas now that can't they even read. They don't they they go. Uh, can't don't read. they got some niggas that can't hey, read? No, no kids. <laughs> they can read. Raw. It's some raw motherfuckers. Man, I just heard them niggas read the other week. They can't read. <laughs> I heard the nigga read. What he do? What he say? Oh. I already know who you talking about. Uh, t- uh, p- uh, <laughs> Paramu, <laughs> Paramount. The Paramu. <laughs> yeah. Nah, he not lying. Bullshit. Not lying. Move. Yeah, he fucked. He fucked Paramount up. I'm talking about. Paramount. He had to. He had to walk. He had to walk through Paramount. Well, everybody like. can't read. Yeah, oh, Paramount. All right, shit. Now you can't read. Your I'm just outside. okay. I'm just, just asking. I'm just so they can know. So they can Paramount. stop asking me. What's the criteria these days? Uh, to be fearless. Fearless. You like you? No, not like fearless. me. Not fearless. like me. You not fearless. like me. You got to be, if you're going to succeed on Wild and Out, you got to be fearless. If you're scared at any moment, you're going to fail. You're going to sink. You're going to stumble off that motherfucking diving board. People think that shit is easy. You got to be make fearless. that shit look easy. And then People because they come in easy. with the fear, with their chest out, fearless, right. as soon as it's crickets and they don't get no laughs, yeah. they get scared. Yeah. And that's it. And, and they, they ain't start second-guessing they shit. Because they think this crowd is just going to come in here and laugh at anything. These ain't fucking people who just trained to nah. laugh. Yeah. These yeah. are niggas who they really watch this the shit button. like they were watching <laughs> they at the house. Nah, nah, put that in I ain't got no laugh that. track. Them niggas nah. laughing for and real. And then them New York seasons. He'd be thinking they'd be like, huh? Yo. Niggas, trash, dude, yo, trash. yo, shut the fuck up, son. Trash, B. Hey, yo, nigga, I'm better than that nigga, B. Word. Right. No cap. You put me on. <laughs> For real, Slim. But that shit was fun, though. That I ain't gonna fun. hold you. That, them was back fun. in the day, Brooklyn was them Jones When was, we had the three level motherfucker on the yeah, side. Yeah, that was that stuff. Nigga, that, that motherfucking green room might have been my favorite that's, shit. That's what I was gonna say. With, that, that, with, the, with the sprite. The sprite, sprite court in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was that the one. Fresh. What, that did my DJ booth in the yeah. middle of that no, motherfucker? Don't bring your DJ that shit was live. That shit was live, man. That was live. That oh, A1, yeah, the, the A1 was wasn't that, fucking that, that, that New like, York nigga, one, man. Like, after the season, it was like, nigga, every show, oh, this got too, It got too crazy. Niggas was coming from the club to the Wild and Out after party. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Line up. Niggas, niggas trying uh. to get a cover charge to get into the motherfucking after party. I forgot we were doing room. that. I forgot. That's why there were so many people in there. Yeah, yeah nigga. Was... people who had wristbands. So we had people in the crowd coming back there fucking with us. Yeah. I did not know that. I was like, whatever well, we doing, but this shit fuck. Hey, I gotta ask you this, Nick. Like, what, what's the reason? Like, cause you do a lot of shit, and I be like, man, that nigga don't have to do that shit, but he really doing it. Right. For example, now I'm talking about the, the good part now, like right, right. as far as the shit that you do. Like we stay, like they didn't, you know, we done had a transition this particular season. We shooting, and we staying at a a a, a hotel, nigga. Damn near a motel. Man, yeah, <laughs> but you staying there, and it's like. Like, bruh, why you do why you do that shit? Like when we was on tour and we had to take showers at the Salvation Army. <laughs> and you was like, yeah, nigga, we going to this. I'm like, bruh, is this nigga in the CIA? Like, why is you taking showers with us at the Salvation Army? I try to keep it thorough, man. If y'all honest. gotta do it, I wanna do it. Why I'm gonna I'm gonna leave y'all. Like, nigga, I, I can be on my jet doing all that. Why though? I wanna yeah. fuck with y'all. But see, that's what I'm saying, but is it just to be able to see what it looks like to struggle? <laughs> like so you don't <laughs> <laughs> like, so you don't forget what it's like. <laughs> let me, uh, let me, what, what is it? Let me, let me, let me uh, say, uh, see what the poor people let, are doing. Let me make sure I never I mean, lose that part of me. Because we was on, I mean, that tour bus seat, like, then that the nigga go get a full shit. body massage the get this dirt off Nigga, me. we was having so much fucking fun that on that tour bus. Niggas man. talking hey. shit late at night. Playing like, good. Yeah, nigga, that shit was fun. Like, I... I won't be by myself in an empty ass jet, nigga. Like that ain't fun. I mean, but I'm, I'm saying you could have took us on the jet. <laughs> that's that's what I really was getting at. Like, how do we transition into seeing the other side of the glasses? Nigga? We we'd have been on this side of the glasses. But yeah, I want to see the inside of the glasses. Nah. This nigga just gonna wait till we get our own and meet us. Okay. And, hey, what's up, baby? You got here? But nah, I just wanted to always rock with y'all and even the same shit like where we stand now, like. I could go waste all that money. I could go get a house, all that type of shit. But like, you with us? With the yeah, like, I want it. It's time to get up to go to work. We all get up and go to work yeah. together. Like, a bed is a bed. But that, I mean, I, I give you that credit though, man, because that's one of the things that I always recognize. Just me being the type of nigga that I am, and knowing that, 
Man, this nigga ain't gotta be round niggas man. for real. Like this man. nigga really could be on some like. Hey, that shit man. seems so phony and boring though, man. Like, to, like cause we all done came across some niggas who really, you know, believe in their own smoke right. and they try to treat niggas different because of right. whatever reason. Like, like who, you really who could. Be, yeah, who want to be around a nigga but like I, that? I will Nobody. say, it, it, it creates. It also creates a sense of like, you know, for me at least, I know I can speak for myself to where. You like, man, this nigga fuck with me. But then it's a certain level that you be looking like, man, dude, how much do you fuck with me? Because you look around and see shit that you be like, man, nigga ain't never asked me to do none of this shit. Because you expose yourself to shit that you don't have to. So how do you balance that? You know what I'm saying? I always say solid, recognize solid. And then when you just lay out the platform, people gonna go get it where they want to get it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, this nigga right here, man, you, you see like, he saw it and he was like, man, I'm gonna go get these movies, I'm gonna go get this hosting shit, I'm gonna go get this music shit, I'm gonna go master this stand-up shit. Like, it was all right there for him. And you see his, his work ethic, you know what I mean? And some people just, just want, like you said, this nigga's purpose in life is to be pimping. Like, that's it, that nigga wanna be In life, back. metaphorically, not like selling coochie. I didn't, nigga, we know what selling you're talking about. Selling coochie of life. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, this is, but you comfortable, Leaning back, talking shit. You know what I mean? Like this nigga right here wanted all. You know what I mean? Then I also see you too, cause I use you as an example. I'm like, bro, I'm watching you land in. I'm talking about literally like 20 minutes before we go on stage, and you go rock that bitch, then leave. You like, what nigga? Oh, he gone. Where he at? In L.A. I'm like, the motherfucker was just here. It's six o'clock. <laughs> in L.A. already, but he got to come back tomorrow because we got to shoot three more. How do you balance? really being the busiest motherfucker I know. <laughs> I'm talking about no cap. The yeah. busiest motherfucker I know, you're a father, and you keep a smile on your face. Yeah. How do you balance it all out? I just look at it as a blessing, man, when like I would pay to do the shit that I get paid to do. Right. Like So when you wake up and God and say, look, all of this is yours, then I'm gonna go try to get it all. And I'm not gonna, like, Obviously, you got to take care of yourself and your, your health and wellness first. But once we pass that, nigga, I'm out here cooking to the, to I can't cook no more. Right. Keep cooking while the pot is hot type shit. Like, like it's, to me, every idea is a great idea till we come up with the best idea. Right. So whether if you got something, he got something, like, look, nigga, let's cook up. Like, if I see an opportunity, somebody, it's a bag over there, it's an easy bag to go get. Like, I'm, it's, I'm trying to be one of those cats that just, understands how to diversify your portfolio on every single level. Mm -hmm. So whether it's entertainment, business, in front of the camera, behind the camera, I'm always gonna be constantly thinking, what's the next play, what's the next move? So luckily, I'm still, I got that youthful energy so I can still go, like, like you said, I don't have to do it no more. I can be chilling on an island somewhere, but it's like, I'm always trying to figure out how to be innovative and what's the next wave, so I can what, keep cooking. Where did that come from for you? The hustle mentality, yeah. growing up with, you know, my pops, I mean, y'all see my pops. And they got <laughs> that nigga <laughs> crazy. That nigga yeah. would stop you red now. Yeah. They got a new idea <laughs> every five yeah. minutes. Yeah. And, and I just, I mean, I got it from him. I mean, he came from the streets to the pulpit to, you know, and then even, you know, just growing up around D boys and hustlers, no. niggas just trying to figure out how to get it. How do so, you keep from going crazy being a check, going from a child star to an adult star? A lot of your peers went crazy and got to fucking with the wrong shit. I don't think I was a child star though. That's a, I think to the world it probably was, but I lived a whole regular life. You know, I was in the projects, cutting hair, selling weed, like, you know, trying to figure it all out like everybody Man, else. selling hey, weed. Nigga. To what age? Selling weed. Nigga. Nigga. You on Nickelodeon at 14, was, No, I wasn't. Nigga, I was grown. For like, you? Yeah. you just looked 14? Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. You like, was grown yeah, on Niggas that. done bought some yeah. weed from me. Do you own Nickelodeon? No, nigga. I, oh, you, I was you, an executive there. I was the chairman okay. for, for years. But but that's what I'm saying. Like, I was, I mean, like, because I don't ever, like I said, I'm not trying to glorify this shit, but like, yeah, nigga, my, nigga. And my, my, my stepdad was the, the biggest D-boy in the city. You know what I mean? So I came up under that shit, and I was, that was the play. Like, yeah, if, yeah, if, if it's entertainment, weed. shit, he was selling more than weed. <laughs> like, that's just what I was doing in high school. I'm talking about, but I was being groomed to be that next nigga to, to kind of operate like that. And it could it could have went that way. And I had a lot of partners that did go that way. And a lot of them niggas is still serving. So how the hell you get into the entertainment? Still... How you get into the entertainment? Give us the day 
that Nick Cannon didn't have to sell weed no more. <laughs> and you don't have to do all that. Nigga, I'll tell you, it, it's, it's a god down this truth, man. Like, um, it was on some save my life type shit. Like, right. um, my area and another area really was getting at it. And partners was just getting shot, dying. And I remember going, uh, I remember I went to my grandpa. I was like, yo, I'm literally scared for my life. Like, I don't think I'm gonna make it out of high school type shit. And, you know, uh, guys on the street, he gave me this book called Name It and Claim It by Dr. Fred Price. That was our pastor at uh, Crenshaw Christian Center. And he was like, if you keep speaking death, that's gonna happen to you. You start speaking life, then whatever you speak is gonna happen to you. He's like, you gotta speak things into existence. And that book was called Name It and Claim It. That was probably the first book uh, when I was about, you know, 15, 16, and I had ever really read Start to Finish and kept reading it over. And I literally, you know, whatever you desire, believe it when you pray it and you shall have it. Also, Mark 11, 23 type Talk stuff. It. Just okay. Really just living it. And I started speaking like, yo, I'm gonna be an entertainer, I'm gonna be a comedian, I'm gonna be a rapper. And like, this is in high school. And I literally, why homies was going through it, and I like it's certain area, I couldn't even go no more. We couldn't go to the mall no more. We couldn't go to different football games because it was active. And I was like, yo, I gotta remove myself out of this environment. So I start catching rides two hours away to Hollywood, standing outside the, the comedy store, the improv, the laugh factory, just with grown niggas. It was everybody from Chappelle to Pierre to the Wayans, like right. I'm just I'm just a kid standing outside sleeping on Jamie Foxx couch, like just really just trying to figure out how not to go back to the hood. Right. Uh, and when I did go back, I, I literally had to get back to school in the morning. Do I niggas wouldn't believe me when I talk about the shit that I was doing? Uh, and I was just like, this is my vision. I'm gonna speak it. And nigga, really within. I ended up graduating high school early, and I, I was on. I was writing for TV shows. I was the warm up on Nickelodeon. I started, you know, at the time it was WB and all that. I was doing all of that, getting holding deals. Jamie Foxx had a, a, a comedy festival down here called Laugh a Palooza. Mm -hmm. yep. Deal out that joint. I was Bay Area Comedy Festival, rocked that shit, won that shit. Like, all of like, and this was, I was fresh out of high school. Right. You know what I mean? But I had, escaped the life that I was like, nigga, once I saw that, I was like, I'm gonna square up like a box of Apple Jacks and just really just whatever y'all say, I'm gonna focus. And so Nickelodeon came, I was like, yeah, I'll be a little kid for y'all motherfuckers, let's yeah. go, let's get it. Bro, Laughing Palooza was some of the dopest shit I ever got to be a part of. Yeah. Cause it was just like a whole week of just, all the comedians in the country just go out yeah, and Nigga, I remember, I, I got my- Hit every club, every stage. At the first Laughing Palooza. Shh. Like we would rock the uptown, we would do d different arenas. It was crazy. Everything in between. All the comedians from in on the whole Chris urban had a club. scene. Really? Yeah, this nigga Chris Tucker had a club out here. He used to bring me down. Like I was again, everybody who started out young would look out for the other young niggas. So they was like, I remember being a teenager. So I remember Chris Tucker flew me and Mike Epps uh, out here to do his club and put us in the same room. I had to bunk with that crazy ass nigga Mike. <laughs> that nigga had all kind of bitches. God damn it, Nick. Stop that. that. <laughs> no, but not. But that's the, those were my OGs. Those were right. dudes that showed me how the game go. And that's you know obviously they was he was young. Mike was young. Like nigga, like Chris was the nigga popping at the time. So like we was just comedians on the road and shit. So, you ever had anybody uh, like you know, little boy you or try to little boy you and then double back and nigga, need you? Oh. Nigga, oh. all, all, all the time. Nigga, all the niggas I was on, all uh, wilding out in the early seasons. Oh, so you don't fuck with them? No, I love them. You don't niggas. fuck with nobody, see? Nigga, yeah, man. see? No, you no, the same kind of nigga. I was a little boy to the See this shit, Chuck? Nigga, uh, Spanky and all them niggas and, uh, shit, uh, Joe Blunt, all them, Thomas Ward, they, they was older. Live, they used to live in the jungles in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I would come up and I'd have to sleep on their floor. You know what I mean? Just, them floor? Yeah, like, Damn. yeah. So it shit like niggas, I, I was the little homie. You know what I mean? Shouts out to, you know, Chris Spencer and, you know, all the niggas, Alex Thomas. Uh, them niggas was, those was the niggas I was looking up to. And, you know, they still in the game strong now, but it's like, you know, when you do this comedy shit, this this it's a whole different culture. Like, yeah, but I, the reason I ask is because how do you handle it? How did you handle it? What's the part? What's the most important part of of the, of the equation that that makes you say, 
I ain't going to do a nigga the way I, sh I could. Like, nah, because, I mean, that, what, you, what, what do you really get out of that? You know, but that's low-frequency shit. You know what I mean? Like, to me, I almost... Niggas know what I got. Like, you get to a point, I ain't got, oh, I'm gonna stun on some niggas that's doing bad. Like, that ain't, you know, like, that ain't. He, he like, why would you, nigga? <laughs> nah, nigga I, I, I wanna see niggas win. Like, right. many, especially especially a lot of the people I came up with. I, I, I wanna see them shine. Like, especially the certified real ones. Like, you know, that's like, I'm, that nigga Scratcho gonna be my nigga for life. Just because that nigga, when I was, a kid, that nigga not only was he, he the big homie too. on stage, that nigga was the protector of all of us just moving around and stuff. I mean, I seen this nigga in Compton knock a nigga out, in, a heckler out, and set the nigga right there, knocked out, and have to tell the rest of the had to hear his whole set. Sleep. No. <laughs> like, Put him up in his the, tent. The nigga sleep. kept talking. He's like, dude, I'm just trying. I'm, I just got out. Like, I ain't, I'm just trying to do this comedy. So he kept talking. Nigga, scratch up. Boop, boop, boop. Pick the nigga up, sit. Nigga heard and he all said, the like jokes. I said. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with OG. Nah, but I'm just saying, cats like that when you come around and like, so any project I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put that nigga in the mood to school, dance, or you know, whatever, wilding out, creating pocket, whatever I could do to help cats that have been with me since I was 15 years old. Like, and that's who, you know, whoever it is, from like I said, Spanky, Scroncho to Whoever else that we was riding with, to niggas obviously that we already know is you know making hella money now from the niggas from Kevin Hart to Cat Williams. We came up hey, together. And you and this right? nigga stay pranking each other. Y'all got a yeah, whole yeah. goddamn prank shit. They done gave us millions of dollars to prank niggas. Now we good. Like this, oh, we gonna have some real right. fun. That was we used to come out our own pockets to prank each other. Now we got right. a budget. We gonna start sending niggas to the moon and I'm shit. About to say, huh? Niggas thought they was on spirit and sent that nigga to Jupiter. Don't prank me. I'm good, Slim. Don't, don't do me like that. Nigga, do you buy that nigga a nah, like some shit? Me, nah, cause, that, cause he an asshole, bro. He'd do us fucked up. He'd be like, yeah, Chico, I'm finally gonna put you in that movie. <laughs> you and Carlos is finally gonna be in the movie. We show up to set, nigga, and scrunch over there with some boxing gloves on. Man, man, yeah, I want to see if you can it's make a it. Roller skate. It's a rolling like, man, what the fuck up there? What the fuck, man? He like, put your skates on. Put your skates up because I'm not fighting with the skates on, Slim. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that, like, that that type of shit though. It's you know fun, what I mean? Though. When you get to that point, like, what what is the shit that that make you want to keep creating outside of the money? Like, is what, it legacy? Some, sh some shit you can have fun at. You know, like I said, that's why me and Kev do what we do. That's I, mean, I wouldn't do wilding out if that shit wasn't fun. Right. Like, nigga, we, Has it we, ever not been fun? Nah, I think I probably went through some stages and shit where I was just like, people was frustrating me because they didn't allow me to take my brand where I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we got a lot of them people out the way. So, like, you know, again, like, we jump in there. <laughs> we, we knock that shit out. We do three episodes in one day and right. have fun. Nigga, if you ain't having fun, you shouldn't be there. Right. And that's just, I tell that from, you know, from the top to the bottom, from the executives to the catering. Like, look, we... We about love, peace, and having a good time. If you want some other shit, then this ain't for you. Oh, I overheard you uh, on one podcast, and you was talking, and you was just saying about the ups and downs, about the business and whatever. Right. And a lot of people would assume that motherfucker fly too. Oh, yeah, yeah I had to show them off. You know. Yeah, the motherfucker died. Right. Good luck. Just match that motherfucker. motherfucking jacket I gave you. I might ask for that no, motherfucker back. I ain't got it no more. Cassidy got it. Oh, oh, y'all niggas just passed. You gave me the jacket? <laughs> nigga, that yeah. jacket worth about 50. Well, he got it now, so don't ask me about the shit, nigga. Yeah, I don't have it no more. Me and Conceited, me and Conceited. Like, that's the thing, like, bro, you got to understand. You didn't, it took us, well, I know for me, it ain't that I didn't want that type of shit back then. <laughs> it was just on Jupiter, yeah, nigga. Yeah, so we expensive. had to get to the point where we could afford them outfits you was wearing. Yeah, yeah. But I don't give a fuck how much money I get. I'm stealing that shit from you, nigga. <laughs> I don't give, because I know you don't need it. Nigga. Yeah, this jacket was like 50. I know it didn't come out of your pocket. <laughs> Let me get that motherfucker. <laughs> but I ain't never tell you, but when he gave me the jacket, the lady that worked with a sweet lady, love her, she's a nice lady. Always nice to me, always chico. I love you so much. Man, that nigga gave me that jacket. She came around the corner like she was great. See about me. Hey, what's up? With, where, where the jacket at? I'm like, <laughs> what, what jacket, man? What you talking about? She was like, did Nick give you the jacket? Nigga, she walked me over there like a principal nigga. Yo, it was some custom Louis yeah, shit. Yeah, she walked me in there. She was like, did you say he could have this? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said he could have it. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can have it. Then me and this nigga Chuck, this nigga Chuck, 
did the Frisco shit on me. I, you know what I mean? This nigga Nick say, man, he was gonna give some shoes away. That nigga Chuck, I'm about to go get the shoes. He pulled me, hey nigga. Hey, bro, how much of this shit you done got, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> hey, for real, bro. How, see, how yeah. much of this shit you done got, bro? Like, for real, bro. Let Chuck, another nigga shoes. eat over the shoe. Niggas all wear the same. Man, size. Chuck, Chuck be calling you about shit like that. Chuck be calling me about crazy shit. <laughs> no, he ain't calling Man, me. Man, nigga asked me on a show how many bitches Nick gave me. <laughs> I said, nigga, you giving this nigga too much credit. Chuck called me and said, yo, yo, what you say about Nick? I said, nigga, watch the rest of the clip. <laughs> he called me back. He was like, all right. <laughs> Man, nigga ain't gave me no bitches. I got my own bitches now, Nick. Hey, hey, have at it. As I, you yeah, should. I want credit for having my own you bitches. Should. Thank you. Yeah. Got Clear that shit up. Don't be calling me, Chuck. has his own bitches. I ain't later. never said yeah. nothing fucked up about Nick. <laughs> that I wouldn't say <laughs> in front of him. Here. He know that. That is true. No, I was saying I had not seen a podcast where... Nick, no, I wouldn't say nothing fucked up about him behind his back. I'm going to say it to him first. Then I'm saying... Everything that come out this nigga mouth is fucked up. Thank bro. you. He knows I'm a terrible person. We have a great relationship. People always ask me about this thing. He is here. I'm happy to ask him about all this crazy shit. I've been knowing Nick when he had two kids. Facts. Just jump. But now I was asking... Uh, I seen a podcast where you was talking about the the way the elevation of the game, and it can go up and down. A lot of people, cause you know, you you started, you, you say you looked young, but everybody swore you was a kid star. Yeah, you yeah. Was great, but you been in the game damn near 30 years, nigga. Damn near. Yeah. Yeah. Hell are you talking about, nigga? That's a long time. I've been doing stand up 30 years. Yeah. I started crazy. doing stand up when nigga was like 12, 11, 12 years old. Yeah, you thought it was you in the game, but I remember you saying that when you did Drumline. Yeah. You was like, I only had 60,000 miles in my pocket when they called. Yeah. You was like, shit. Why I might not even have that, because that's what they paid me to do drumline. That's what they paid you to do drumline. But drumline what you did check. from drumline. You know. I didn't really have, I mean, I was, it was check to check. But at that time, drumline was my biggest check, and I was 60. Speak on that, living. Yeah. Check to check. Yeah. In the industry, household name. Yeah. And motherfuckers know you. Right. But you living check to check. I mean, that's just like everybody's job. And like, I, we, I was doing, I was probably making more money doing stand up than I was getting off of TV at that time. Right. You know what I mean? Because. You know, early days of Nickelodeon, they weren't paying. That's why I was writing, too. I was trying to write and do all of that because there was more checks there. I'd do the warm-up, show up, grab that 500. I, like, I was just trying to hustle. I was dancing on Soul Train for... Stop, man. Niggas sweat me and Avion. I was about to say, Avion <laughs> Crockett. <Carter. Dang. laughs> Bro, at the, the comedy club that I started in, they got a picture of Avion. I fuck with that nigga about every time I see him. I'm with like, the gotta, Yeah, the, I'm talking about the the... The alien Jones. Yeah, I yeah, was like, the palm yeah. tree. Bro, you ever work with that nigga that looked just like you? <laughs> that nigga, the other nigga, the uh, that nigga that looked just like you, nigga. Oh, I know what you talking about. Uh, in Roll Bounce, the nigga who Wesley. Nigga, we was in Roll Bounce together. I was say, you I'm saying on some uh, other on the on the other shit. That was the only shit y'all did. Yeah, I mean, nigga, that was that was my partner for. Shit, like we used to tell niggas we was brothers when we was coming up in no. auditions and shit like that. And that nigga was, you talking about Wesley Jonathan? Bro, I guess that's a nigga. Yeah, he, had, he had city guys. He had the show that used to come on Saturday mornings on NBC. So that nigga was popping. Yeah, yeah. So I was his little bro. So like that nigga was, you know, that nigga was in Panther. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that shit, like he, he was in a classic film and all of that shit. So we, I, I looked up to that nigga. And that's just, you know, it's one of them moves where, when you out in Hollywood, like I, I had a different gift because I was auditioning and doing music and shit, but mm -hmm. stand up was what I was known for. So I didn't even really have to audition a lot. I'd be like, yo, send the casting director, send the director to the improv that night and to the mm -hmm. comedy store. And they'd be like, yo, this is what my fucking getting off, you know? And so I would skip over a lot of shit, but like, you know, like, I, I mean, y'all done heard the story. Nigga, every young black kid in music and in Hollywood auditioned for Drumline. Right. Like, I had to go in that motherfucker about eight different times, and I ain't never booked no shit off of drum, like, auditions before. So I'm like, I, you know, I was musical, so I knew how to move around. And, right. you know, luckily the director, Charles Stone, was so cold. That nigga directed Drumline and paid in full. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was his first two movies, and but before that, he was just a dope music you know, video commercial director. Mm -hmm. And he saw something in me, man. And it's just like, out of thousands of niggas. Like, and you, I mean, people tell you story every year. 
You hear Silk the Shocker talking about it, T.I., everybody. Like, nigga, when I tell you. Silk the Shocker? Yeah, everybody, nigga. Everybody auditioned for that shit. The niggas from TV shows, movies, everybody was auditioning for that shit. Silk the motherfucking Shocker in there talking about you. Man, none of my wanna see no goddamn Silk the Shocker playing no drum. That nigga from, from Louisiana, you know he grew up with instruments and drums and shit. If, if, if not drumline, what would you say, what was the moment for you was like, oh shit, I made it? I, we were always at, I still don't feel like that. I don't feel like that. Dead ass. Like, nigga, I'm in, and all y'all niggas, like, I'm constantly hustling. I know you hustling. I ain't talking never, about, we talking about when the shit got different, when the checks got different. Well, I can tell you, like, the biggest check, but even then. No, I don't want no big check. But even then, when that shit would happen, <laughs> it'd be gone so quick. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Nah, I'm like, this shit be oh, okay. Damn, he said, I'll tell you with the big chick. No, I don't want to hear that shit. What the guy? Because <laughs> he's going to tell me the shit. I'm like, God damn. I know it's out there. But it's like, when did that shit change, though? Like, it's still, we all knew Wild and I changed. It helped change. Well, see, no, shit. but you got to remember. Well, for, yeah, for y'all, but for me, Wild and I wasn't. For y'all. No, but Wild and I wasn't a success when it first dropped out. Then nigga was bad. Like, again, they was excited about punk and all of that shit. And I was just like, you know, we was just, we, we was doing well. Right. But we was waiting. Are oh, they going to pick us up? Nigga, the Wild and Out season, the first season was six episodes. Right. And we just wanted to get to season two, though. And then they gave us eight. Right. Like, oh, we thought we was on, nigga. And then from there, it just slowly. So even then, like, Wild and Out wasn't a su success at first. Right. You look back and be like, shit, we've been doing this shit two decades. But even Drumline wasn't a success. Like that shit opened moderately. It did well, right? But they didn't market it. They didn't promote it. Nigga, they had no billboards. Barely, like a oh, commercials was only on BET. But the the culture fucked with it and turned right. it into the classic. Mm. Like so, everything. Like I've never had that that where a whole system or a whole oh, studio push. believes in you. Like uh -huh. like the shit when you see like with these actors today, like shots out to bro, uh, Michael B. Jordan. You go, draw that nigga's on buildings and bit right, like, right, right. I, because, I mean, and it's dope. Like whether it's from Creed to Black Panther, or, right. you know what I mean? Like there's a different, there's certain people that a whole studio will get behind. Fact, and be like, fact. we want to turn this person into a movie star. You want to turn this person to a television star. You'll get, some, get like a Donald Glover and a whole mm -hmm. network will get behind them and motherfuckers be at the Emmys and all that shit. Right. Like, that's because the system fucks with them. Mm -hmm. I'm outside the system. Everything I done did, all my success I had to work for. Ain't nobody ever believe in me. And that's just the shit. And that's why I believe in niggas like y'all because I know that pain. I know that it's pain. like ain't, uh, where don't nobody support you. You feel like you out there by yourself. So now at least I know how to build my own shit. So let me teach niggas the game so they can build their own shit. So they don't have to have all of their, their self-esteem built off of a, of a system that never fucked with them in the first place. Facts. So you got that side. You got, you got, you got, I fucked with it. You got that side of it. I fucked with it. You, you got that side of it, right? that side that you're dealing with on the corporate side and the Hollywood side, and then you got the other side of it, the shit that niggas come up to us and be like, man, Nick Corny for real? Like, man, get nigga real nigga. You know what I mean? He so, done been with me. Yeah, no, listen. Like swing on oh, yeah, nigga. listen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we standing there like... One more time. <laughs> He's pissing me off. Yeah, all what? the way. Nick ain't here, my nigga. He ain't here. here. Yeah, all I'm the way. Here. Yeah. But we, let's but go we, talk. let's nigga, go fucking talk then. Yeah, niggas, he go right there behind me like, like y'all yeah. was shooting some shit. Yeah, we was shooting some shit in Times Square. But Buddy was just he, he was, was talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, like you, you deal with you dealing with that on that side. But you've never said, "Hey man, what the fuck y'all mean? I'm calling, nigga. I'm over here dealing with this shit. You bitch ass niggas got me fucked up." <laughs> like. Why haven't you felt the need to ever address that part? You address a lot of shit. You address some shit that you shouldn't address. <laughs> but you never address that. Cause Why that not? Shit, like, cause it don't bother me. Like, that's like, it don't really like, I, I like when niggas call me corny, nigga. That's, that's my motherfucking like decoy. I'll yeah. take that all day. Like, I, I don't, I want you to underestimate me. I want you to think shit is sweet. So, cause then now I got the upper hand, whatever the situation is. But we know you and we know that this shit is, that shit ain't even, it ain't even, it don't even apply to the gangster shit. We be seeing you do and we're like, man, these motherfuckers new. It's beauty. I don't blow my cover. Like, I want to be, I'm corny. Yes, that's, it is what it is. Because, and, and then it is marketable. 
Nigga, exactly. I always say, nigga, the corny is. I you know, seen the nigga. I charisma. seen the nigga do some shit. That's the that's the shit. Like chicks really like corny motherfuckers. If you, they want you to make them laugh. Don't be on here giving relationship advice. Advice. You, advice. You, 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 you get terrible. I'm your show. Talk. You give terrible I got, advice. I got, I'm asking Which them one? questions. I got. I got. Don't one, got one that. me. The one you giving terrible advice on wearing bright orange hoodies and That's shit. That's my morning show. That's why I be wearing. You starting shit. off the morning giving out bad advice. You know, first of all, I ain't never gave a nigga advice at, ever <laughs> in life, nigga. I know. You did tell a nigga get a lawyer. Well, well, you I never mean, liked what we were getting paid. You what? like, y'all didn't get a lawyer and walk off. I'm like, okay. <laughs> exactly what that nigga told me. Nah, but the front part, he didn't camera. even walk off. Right. The nigga said, y'all niggas get a lawyer and went and laid in his bunk on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, did this nigga just go get in the bunk? After, <laughs> after, after telling us, <laughs> <that, laughs> all right, well, bye. Hey, y'all niggas went and got lawyers. Yeah, yeah, and you see what the... Um... <laughs> But I don't give advice on camera, is what I'm saying. Right. You know what I mean? So what would you say is hard? It's okay. As, 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 a, as, a, as a man with many gifts, many talents, I understand. Yeah. You got the hosting. You got the comedy. You got creative content. You got, you got music, motherfucker. Yeah. Movies. Movies. What would you say was the hardest to grab? The hardest to achieve? I know you're saying you still overcome yeah. the shit. I mean, like, I think the shit that... We're, obviously, we all know like the shit that's probably the most frustrating because the music game is not a real game. It's not based off of talent. Right. So niggas can't don't sit, sit around and know I play seven instruments and right. make all the beats on wild and out there. It's just like you got to have a story, a trajectory. I mean, you go through the same shit. All y'all go through the same shit. Y'all niggas is gifted, but they want to hear about the nigga that was trapping or the nigga that just got out. Yeah. And it's like, act like they don't see you. That's how it works. You know yeah, I mean? so it's like, which is cool because there's something to it because niggas like authentic. They like real shit. They like a nigga. Like, that's that's why today the, the biggest D-boy in the hood can become the biggest rapper in the world because, like, oh, this nigga is certified and they get respect in this field. So all we got to do is put this nigga together with some rhyming words and a dope beat right. and he out of here. Right. So when a nigga who's not trying to do that but can come up in the church and sit on the organ and sit on the drums and all of that stuff, those usually don't be the dudes that succeed in that space. So we still on the grind and, you know, even like I done put, you know, multi-platinum artists on. I done put, I done built careers, but I'm never one to gloat to be like, oh, I wrote that song or I did this. So I, like, I just, but the music game is always going to be a challenge. One, it's a young man's game. Mm -hmm. So to be able to stay current and really, and that again, y'all niggas keep me hot. You know what I mean? The next generation of artists that I'm looking to find, the new show I got, Future Superstars, I'm, I'm finding teenagers. I'm finding, and, and I learned that game from the Quincy Jones and the, the L.A. Reeds. Man, that and all. shit been done. Go find some old niggas who never got a chance. They too old. I did that on America's Got Talent, nigga. Nah, oh, fuck that. <laughs> I did that already. <laughs> Them Susan Boyd was and shit like yeah. that. I remember. Find that if old I'm nigga in that subway who be singing Sam Cooke. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> One of them early seasons of Wild and Out, you was bringing her around. Like, H E R, her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gabby, I remember. Little Gabby. Yeah, like, you was like, this was, yeah, this is, you know, my new artist or somebody I'm working with at the yeah. time. And every time I see her, I be thinking I'm tripping. I'm like, I think that was the. That's it, yeah. yeah. I put her on Nickelodeon. I, I directed and produced a movie for Nickelodeon that had. Her in it, Soldier Boy, Justin Bieber, uh, shit like it was. That I've always had a knack to to know who's gonna be next in the young young talent space. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where we continue in that that vibe. But I think now I'm gonna probably stick my chest out a little bit more and be like, yo, I produce that record or I right. put that person on. Yeah, they you gotta do it a little bit more. I never wanted to though, cause I always like, like to play the, the back. The music industry, they know, but then they be like. If they know, no use behind it, they like, oh, because the, in the music game, there's so many different platforms and Thanks. so many different titles and jobs. People be thinking, you got to be the motherfucker that's holding the mic to sing. But no, I can put the shit together. And then sometimes it might be better that people don't know because they know you did it and just don't act like they don't like it just because they know you did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Motherfucker act like, oh, he did it? Oh, I don't even want to hear it now because I know I ain't going to like it. But if you don't put your name on it, then a nigga. Yeah, that's why I have my, like, even when I used to produce uh, records for Mariah and shit, I didn't want people to know. So I had an oh, alien. Oh, shit, put it out there, my so boy. It was uh, the Heat Miser. 
So it's like, all the motherfuckers. Man, of all the names you could have came up to, he might. What do you know who the fuck the heat might say? You're a young nigga. You don't know who the heat might say. Oh, he about to flex on me. Yeah, but please. Nah, See, here you go. It was this old ass show back in the day where niggas used to get high to and watch this shit. It was like the, the black version of like motherfucking Sesame Street and shit. And these niggas, it was like, it was like HR puffing stuff and all that shit. Or no, and it, it was the Heat Miser, if you remember, then they also made the shit, um, the Christmas, the, the motherfucking Rudolph the Red Nose yeah. Reindeer shit. And it was like the nigga that was ice cold. And then it was the other nigga with the, the flame hair. That nigga was the Heat oh, Miser. Oh, Heat Miser. Yeah, I'm telling you, nigga, that shit was fire. So, so what beat I'm, did the Heat old, Miser, what's the hottest beat that the Heat Miser made for Mariah Carey? Uh, that shit that just went viral again. Uh, um, it's a rap. Well, you know what you should have produced. And I put, I put Mary, Mary J. Blige on the, on the remix of that motherfucker. Well, if you would have produced that damn Christmas song. Oh, yeah, nigga, I was fucking yeah, it was 13 when yeah, that bitch exactly. came out. Now, that's that, 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 Now, we done made so many jokes over the years yeah. about all of the shit that you got going on because you're such a public person. Right. I mean, you can't, I don't know why you, you just said they don't nobody believe in you, but somehow... The universe just seems to always have oh, yeah. you in front of some shit. Oh, yeah. like the God universe, got my back. The, the universe <laughs> finds a way to put you in front of Everybody. the world, and everything you say and do is right there for to, to be consumed by the public. So, why do you choose to like as as we've known you? You've grown, and to me, at least in my eyes, you started to like let people in the shit that you used to that you had to be in this space to be able to see. Now you just giving quotes about shit, and I'm like, ain't no way that nigga said that out loud, man. But where does that, does that come from just fatigue of giving a fuck? I mean, I think I always just been the same nigga. Like, it just, I think like you said, if, if the spotlight is on me, I'm, all, I'm gonna keep it a stack. You ask me a question, I'm gonna answer it to the best of my ability and right. truthfully. Now, you don't have to be trolling sometimes, though. But some, yeah, now. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> now, like, now, what is the I mean, change? Right now, because it's like, I'm in this business. When I'm building brands and shit like that, I know if I say a certain shit, it's going to go viral. I always say, you know, you got to manipulate the media before the media manipulates you. Right. You know what I mean? So you got to know how to maneuver in these spaces. And also, I got to be the front runner in a lot of this shit. Right. So sometimes I got to step out there and say some shit that other niggas are scared to say. Or, or feel like, yo, whatever consequences come with it, I can handle it. Right. You know what I mean? Where another motherfucker might say some shit and their career be gone. Right. So, you know, it's really about, you know, truly living that freedom of speech shit, especially when they know your core right. is, is centered, where you're coming from an authentic place. You're coming from a place where you just really want to see people shine and see people win. Well, speaking, of, uh, speaking of media manipulation and, you know, we ain't never talked about this or whatever. When all that shit went down, and you know what I'm saying, and we was fired. Niggas was fired. We, we was fired. It's your fucking bullshit. fault. <laughs> we was fired. It's during the fault. pandemic, I ain't, got, bro. I ain't gonna tiptoe around. We it. You was during the pandemic, you it up, bro. Nick. During hey, bro, the pandemic, bro. Bro. You you talking about it, goddamn it. Okay. I mean, during the pandemic, he definitely didn't fuck up. You fucked it up, Nick. What? How did you feel when? Because nobody was. I ain't never got off no money. It was a. An interview and they asked me, right, right. If you, if they wanted to, if they wanted to replace Nick, how much money was it gonna take for you to get on the show? And I was like, I ain't taking they asked shit. That off the Breakfast Club. Yeah, right? yeah. I, was like, I ain't taking shit. Nah, that's if a motherfucker. If I ain't ever told you yeah, on camera, nigga, I love you for that too. Well, that's I appreciate real it. Shit. I didn't want to. I you know, I would have took the money. Yeah, we know. You know that. <laughs> I would have left your name on the shit. Nick Cannon presents Carlos Miller presenting the shit that he presented. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you know I wouldn't I, took the money. No, we wasn't nah, but I, like I, that, I just want to know, like, when that shit popped up, because you still a regular nigga right, right. outside of all the shit that you accomplished. Because we right. acting like this because we do so much, we ain't got emotion. Facts. And we ain't got feelings. Yeah. So when that shit popped up and you heard my response, what was your initial reaction when you were like, God damn? Nigga, I loved you for that shit, but also because I was at a time, I had told them niggas I wasn't coming back. Like, like, it's funny because a lot of, okay, if you remember how it actually played out. I remember. Oh, I remember. I remember, I, remember. I was at the house. I never Them watched Father They, they mm. got mad and, you know, they said, you know, and I had been in this situation before with NBC and everything to where yeah. the people that the higher ups. 
said, we have to teach you a lesson. Right. They literally, they was, they, in, behind closed doors, they said, we have to make an example out of him. Because, you know, other people in, in our space and our, it was, was talking reckless. Right. Yeah. And it got back to me. I was like, they want to make an example out of me. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Right. Like, if that, if that ain't the most offensive and butt-breaking slave master shit if I ever someone you gonna make you gonna hang me uh, out in front of all the niggas and, right. and make it and make an example out of me right and so you know they got then you got to start backtracking you know and so then they offered it back to me immediately like yo how can we figure this out and there was a lot of amazing people that you know that I worked with for years that's why I say you can't ever even blame an individual when you're talking about corporations right. because there's boards there's shareholders you know what i mean there's people that been putting money into it for a long time and the majority of the people understood you know yo nick is family he's been at this company since he was a teenager right. and then, but there's some people that literally like we got to make an example out of him mm -hmm. so by the time we got there i was like fuck that brand fuck that matter of fact this is my brand. I've owned it for the majority of the time. And I want this, I want that. It's, we did the evaluations. We knew how many billions it was worth. Like we was ready to go to war. And I was like, if I never step foot back on that motherfucking stage again, I don't care. I was done with Wildin' Out. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I was just like, one, I had a whole, I had, I was getting more money at other networks. Was, Fox had my back. Right. Solid, Fox, you know what I mean? Like I, solid. You know Fox. what I mean? Yeah, Fox, yeah. Fox. 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 yeah. So it was like, I'm good, and like I, I was cool. Like and, you know, I'm a. I walked away from NBC. I walked away from millions a couple years earlier than that, and then doubled up and and got the number one show on Fox, right. believing in myself. So I was like, I'm gonna just do that shit again. Right. And like I was, I was like, so whatever they want. And then when I heard Jog do he do the interview and a couple other people and shit, I was like, damn, it's a lot more people that love this brand and and eating off this brand and provide for their families with this brand. So I was like, all right, I'll come back and do it for them. I was 21, 20 years old, right? Yeah. So for me, with that kind of money, still living in the projects, we had to figure it out. Right? What's happening, Phoenix? Phoenix! Hey! Where the fuck did all these black people come from in Phoenix? Where y'all been? What's happening? Where y'all been? And I'm not speaking for every man in the, in the... If I make it to be making 200 million... Nigga, I can make 200,000. I feel like I supposed to fuck any bitch I want. So if Zion, if you want to do that, live your life. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Drea Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode. Perfect. Show these niggas the trick. Now, they my house. I done took y'all everywhere. Now, come on over. All them vines and shit. Mold days and shit. Over to the pizza what oh, we got yeah. right here? This granddaddy, man. This Come on. Um, this is what I got for my 40th. I ain't do nothing to it. Usually I put 40s on everything I got. Um, I ain't do nothing to this, but put some music in there, you know what I'm saying? Did you do the do on it? Did a booty cat. Did you yes, sir. Woo, you, you was hitting on that joint? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Give my booty eight all that. A <laughs> God damn, okay. That's living the life. When you, when you on the, hold on, when you stand on a blow up mattress and you can get a girl lick your ass, eat your ass, yeah. you a bad, you cold blooded. Hey. No, but shit, nigga be broken and bitch, man, think about it. You ever been so broke, you just feel like you about to pass away sometime soon? <laughs> you be like, I know God ain't got me out here living like this. A Bay Area native, you understand me? You got this, you got to get this monkey off your back, you understand me? <laughs> if you ain't never broke a female off no chicken. <laughs> now, it's nothing that, you know, men should glorify and be proud of, but you know, it's just culture.
I come well, we back. We wasn't coming back. Hey, yeah. we said that yeah. live. Yeah. Like, now, nigga, it was it was unity. Not coming that's back all. and doing that shit without that nigga, man. I wish another nigga wish would. I would have did. Come Jason man, Derulo I presents. I put that nigga in the back of your head. Stop that motherfucker. Jason Mike. Derulo <laughs> presents <laughs> Wildin' Out. Derulo. What? Nah, hell nah. But they remember they had the memes of Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, Brian Seacrest what? presents Wildin' Out. That was so crazy how they ASAP put that out there with like. Let's just try to put a white face on it to see how they will react. Oh, yeah, we was like, what? Nah, but nigga. We gonna beat the nigga who created it up. You tripping. Nah, <laughs> nah that, but that's, I mean, that's what it was. I saw so many other, you know how many families we provide for were wilding out? Hell you know what yeah. I mean? It just I know one in particular. Who? Mine, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. awesome. But that's what I'm saying. So it's like I, I came back because I wanted to do it for everybody else, and that's, and even now that's why we, you know, trying to give other people. Out. We we the funny thing what you say like, behind closed doors in the business meetings and stuff because as you see there's a lot of stuff going on, the mergers and this company buying this company and this. So I know how much value Wild and Out has. I know the digital numbers. I know the ticket sales when we doing the Live Nation tours. So. And a lot of times they try to keep us in the dark. Right, with, right, right. They don't want you to know your value. So I know the value, so I'm like, yo, Wild and Out should be its own network. We've produced enough content, enough stars. We're we, we going towards 500 episodes. Right. So just based off of that alone, nigga, the, you know how much value is it just in that IP alone? Right. Nigga, like you said, look, at, look what Friends is worth. Look what Seinfeld is worth. Niggas ain't got half the amount of episodes we got. Facts. You know what I mean? Everything that you think is a success, look at what we've done over the years. Look at the the all the millionaires we done made and produced. And so when you know the value of something, even when they try to act like it ain't value, oh we don't know, oh we're gonna move you to this network. Ah, right. uh, you can play the games if you want to, give it back. Right. Watch what I do with it. Right. And that's where they don't they don't want us to know how much power is in it. But the power is in us. Right. That's why when y'all, with y'all built with 85 South, it's like, keep going. Because cause you quietly showing them, them bigger studios and networks that you don't need them. Right. That your fans going to come with you wherever you go. Right. It's great to see y'all on TV, but they also going to follow you over here. And they're going to make sure they're going to come see you in, in their city. Right. They're going to wear your merch. And that's the stuff that's. That's magic in a bottle. You can't get that every day. It comes every a lot story. of responsibility, though. Hell yeah. Well, I think that's the part that people don't talk about. Like, cause I know, like, in the space of Wild and Out, we didn't been, we didn't been through trans. You didn't been Nick Cannon the whole time, but we didn't develop nigga. Ain't nobody know who Chico Bean was in season five, or you know, like Carlos Miller to where we, who we are now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I've seen when the environment be a certain way, and then you walk in the room and everybody's changed. Everybody ah. start doing something different. And right. Everybody, how do you navigate that? Because when you had that type of power and you walk in the room and everybody was doing what they maybe wanted to be doing, and then you walk in and they start doing some other shit that's tr in front of you, like how do you know who's there? How do you navigate <laughs> people in that regard? Cause you've been seeing them since the jit. I mean, it's one of them things, man. You gotta, it's chess. You gotta let they, they're gonna expose themselves. They're gonna move how they want to move. And some people are going to show you how solid they are. And you just gravitate towards that. You know what I mean? Like, it's, everybody is putting on their best representative. And ultimately, you come across a nigga like this, who no matter what room he in, he's going to always be the same nigga. Even when it's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga be cussing out the motherfucking <laughs> cameraman and the... Tech, like, but they love me. And they they, they, they want to hear this shit. Yeah, but then there's a nigga who, where we all thinking the same thing, but I, I, I play the game a little bit more. I know how to, I, I'm going to strategically tell you the same shit he telling you, but I'm going to do it in a way to where you feel like it's at least politically correct. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, now I'm at a stage where I ain't even got to say shit, like you saying. See? Like now... My presence speaks for itself. Right. So when I walk in the room, you, my, the aura is going to make you either straighten up or have to back off because it's like, oh, yeah, he probably really don't fuck with me because I'm on some bullshit and he can sense it. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's, I, like, spiritually, that's where I've been trying to, you know, get to 
to where now I ain't even got to say shit. I just walk in the room and people know what it is. Yeah. And well, can we set the record straight, man? Right here on motherfucker. I'm scared. I can't be that high. Of, he's scared of weed. Yeah, I'm scared of weed. I'll yeah, be too high sometimes. <laughs> set the record straight right here, right now. Let's face to face for the motherfucking world, man. Because I'm sick of this shit. I'm tired of asking this goddamn question. You did not fire Carlos. Nah, can you tell you I want to tell the truth? Yes. Tell yeah. The fucking we been, yes. yes. We tell the truth. Yeah, they, tell before the you truth. answer, be watching, be like, before you damn, answer, damn, before you answer I, I speak from there. I've never been fired. Right. But we have been done in a way to where it's like, damn, like what has a nigga been doing on these scripts? Like, no, I'm not truth. a nigga. I'm tell not the a nigga. Truth. I want to know the truth. No, I'm and not, not only that. Nigga, listen, I'm not the telling. nigga. You know my person. I'm not the nigga to be like, nigga, run the tape back. You got me fucked up. <laughs> but they put you in a position where it's like, nigga, is that what I get? Do I got to show up and be the nigga that I can be and be ignorant to make a motherfucker realize it? Or do I just have to say my feelings hurt? Because when you know that you put this shit down in a certain way and a motherfucker just be like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. You'll see what? And we be like, nigga, is because you remember when Los was gone, we both had conversations like, nigga, this shit feels strange, Nick. Hey. What we gonna do? We came to Nick and to said, Nick, we to you like, bro, nah, you. like, right. please, brother, whatever man. we gotta do to get this nigga back here, cause the environment ain't the same. Like, who do that? Who the fuck is the person or the people that be like, fuck us like that? Man, I told y'all for the game. I'm glad y'all even already laid it out there because y'all already talked about the origin in this conversation already. When we was on that motherfucking tour bus, and I told y'all niggas, go get lawyers. Right. That's exactly where that shit starts. Don't let nobody tell you anything different. This whole motherfucking world is ran by attorneys. Like, go, y'all go home and watch the motherfucking Devil's Advocate. Are y'all already at yeah. home? Yeah. Watch that shit with Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves. Like, when you, the people who are speaking that legalese and talking that shit, they the ones that run all of this shit. And if you got a good, solid lawyer rocking with you that ain't in the pockets of the other motherfuckers, because that's where even your lawyers can be, playing both be on sides. some snake shit because they've been cool with the corporate lawyers and all them people since back in law school. Right. And they all under the same entity. Right. So they all got the same oaths and beliefs and all of that shit. So that's the groundwork. So I'm going to tell you all what I have to deal with every single season. Every single season, they tell me I got to cut the budget. And I figure out how the ways to maneuver it, because, again, they don't want a nigga to know his value. Even though our shit steady rising, they're going to try to find something. They're going to tell me, well, you know, your, your 3 a.m. shows aren't really rating as much as, as well. Nigga, don't give a fuck about that. We know what the numbers is doing online. Right. So, again, we let them give it. They give us a number. And, again, you know, motherfuckers jobs to keep telling you a lower number so and that's every season so the goal is they always want to seem like they got more power and there's like i said there's a lot of people who ain't there no more who were in positions of power that would say stuff that like everybody's replaceable you know what i mean like and just you're like i right, well that ain't the brand i'm rocking with right but i understand what you're saying because of what we built you know Nobody's bigger than a brand, right. you know, we really trying to get to it. So as this loud, outspoken motherfucker has always been from day Somebody one, ass out. he probably said, I don't even know. Like, again, I don't know, but you know, he didn't, he didn't have too many friends in higher places to say, but he looked like somebody that was, as they considered a, a troublemaker. And y'all remember there's been incidents where people would get- Incident. Now, I'm not, just, I'm not just saying you, but there would be certain, we'd have to have conversations with HR because we might have said something about a certain community. Or we might have said something, a joke or something that made someone uncomfortable and they went and complained about the, or again, smoking in the, or whatever. It's always, if you get, just like at any job, wrote if somebody up. wrote, writes you up too many times, now you won't notice. They paying attention and you, you get the, you get the jacket of, uh, of a rabble rouser, a troublemaker. That's mm -hmm. just, and you know, we all been there, but he was probably one of the more louder ones. Right. So when he came game. up, and again, man, we gonna keep it a stack. <laughs> keep it a stack. When everybody, at no point did anybody say, we don't want Carlos, we don't want you. 
we all have representation. Mm -hmm. And when the way it got back to me and a couple of other, other executives is, you know, when it's time to renegotiate for your deal, Carlos, be, rightly so, was like, Carlos don't want that deal. Carlos want more money. Carlos want it like as his represent. All of our representatives have, have right. shown us, and even based off of as we sit here right now, they value all of us differently. Right. And I, get, I'm the only one. I get to see everything. Right. But you know, even at the time, they give. He got holding deals. He doing other shows. He doing MTV movies. So they value DC differently. So they'll say, well, as long as we got DC, we're good. And it's like, but you know, we we all want right. to be good. And then it's like, so then I got I get put in a weird position. I'm like, but I I don't I don't do the bullshit. I'm like, I want everybody back, even the niggas Carlos don't like. I want I want everybody get it. Cause I if that's I know my budget <laughs> is larger, and I can move it around. I get niggas more episodes. Cause if I say I, cause like right now our cast members they try to get me down to six on six. And with a, with the team captain, so it's really including myself. It's seven on seven. Y'all remember there's been seasons where it's been thirteen 12, on thirteen, 13 on thirteen. Right, right, because right. I was like, I want as I, I can maneuver it around as much as I want to. Right. So when they were like, all right, well, we're gonna send everybody's deals out, and we're gonna see who comes back. And y'all, this shit even happen this season, when niggas don't come talking back the way they like it. They was like, oh, he doesn't want to do it anymore. Hmm. And that's how it got. There's like Carlos isn't signing his deal. And I'm like, and I'm in the same position y'all niggas. I, nigga, I almost didn't come down to this motherfucker until they got my money right. right. So as much as I'm going to hold it down and be like, but they do me the same way. And I got I to gotta hold tight, stand on my square and be like, nah, I ain't coming until you get to. And I see the numbers. Mm -hmm. I know what everybody get. I know the value. So in those situations when, again, you got the, the people demand we knew we wanted those back but when the people and y'all remember when when they came back and we was all standing outside by the trailers and like yeah you know i don't know why nick didn't want you but motherfucker, come over here and say that shit that you know how it is right. like that ain't that's never how it plays i'm gonna so tell everybody nick cried, cried when i came back yo he huh? cried cry when i came back <laughs> <Did> no <laughs> yeah. the nah, fuck the back? episode it was when it, it was before the camera came on yeah, the nigga hid in my dressing room. Yeah. And Nick, Nick cried. He ain't want nobody but to But that know. was one of the funniest <laughs> episodes <laughs> ever. That shit was Nick. That was one of the, because, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 because, because when he came out, at, this is probably the only time we've done this, as I know for speaking from our perspective, because right. that's the thing that, from my, from my vantage point, that always makes me say, well, damn, where does the, you know, where does the, the credit come in for the type of people that we are in the environment and understanding it was necessary? Because well, if we wanted to, we could just go out there and just, I'm talking about berate motherfuckers. Right. And, and wouldn't be right. nothing nobody could do. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, it wouldn't be nothing that could be done. And, but we understand the structure of the, this. This is a team sport. So we understand that it, it's like, man, we got to make everybody look good. Hey, right. bruh. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Do that. But yeah. that day when that nigga came yeah. back, we was like, nigga, get the fuck out the way. Move. Yeah. If you don't do this shit at the highest level, sit down and watch, nigga. Right. Nigga. That was it. That's what that, that's the same episode y'all got out of my little brother. Brother Shoes. Yeah. yeah. That nigga shit. That nigga's yeah. famous in the hood. Them big ass yeah. boots. Yeah. All the way. On that boy that day, boy. They that, that, designed them Astro boots after that he, nigga. He was the only one that had the heart to, to step up and do something. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else was, was like, Ah, is the gang is back together. Gang is back together. Yeah, because that's what that's the part of it that's mean the most to us. It's like that shit. Yeah. Like nigga, that's the part where we be like, man, what is y'all? How do y'all not understand that this because is? Because we what, entertain each other when when I see them go up, I be like, what the hell did nigga feel to say, man? When he go up, I be like, I know that nigga Chico got something clever to say. And when I go up, I look at them. I get confirmation. They be like, nigga, but I don't give a fuck what you do. I'm nigga, like, that, yeah. But y'all to live an example of solid. Like, even yeah. all the shit we talking about, nigga, you ain't never seen no niggas root for each other like y'all root for each other. Like, on some, like, damn near some Rat Pack type shit. And even them niggas broke up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, y'all niggas really want to see each other win and understand y'all let, y'all go all over this fucking world or every city, state and just vibe off of each other. Name another time. Nigga, the kings of comedy, they didn't fuck with each other. Exactly. Like, 
Them niggas was beefing backstage. Yeah. Y'all niggas really fuck with each other, man. From and and people, we the world has watched you get it out the mud right. and still keep it in the trap and still show loyalty and love. Like I ain't never even nigga niggas who done from D boys to rappers, all the niggas break up. So I was like, all oh, niggas can't never break up, nigga, because y'all on some shit where you literally are in front of the world, a living example of what solid shit look like. Right, that's bad. Like, no, 85 South, that shit is about unity. Like, y'all niggas turned the whole fucking interstate into a gang. It's a community <laughs> unity. Yeah, I mean, but like I said, like the same way you say we fuck with each other, I can say genuinely, bro, we fuck with you. Man, that's like, love. That's real. Like, bro, yeah, we fuck with you. Like, niggas is like, I pre that's niggas, love. niggas is like, like, we really love you, Slim. Like, if you, if we never did another episode of Wildin' Out, like, the fact that you was the willing king. to stand next to that shit is the most amazing shit ever. Nigga. Like nigga, a this decade, nigga. nigga. Yeah, that, that long, that long. That you <laughs> that did, all of the shit that you've yeah. done throughout yeah. the years, and stood next to us and said, "I, right, nigga." When you had morale, we was telling all them other sit y'all last down, nigga. Y'all ain't doing no work. My last, my last day tomorrow, nigga. So I ain't <laughs> fuck it, you know. Be there, y'all niggas be there. I'll be there. Let me get y'all together. Fuck it, y'all. Let's do it. Uh, you can stay in more days? Yeah, nigga. All right, nigga, Please. come back. Like, Please. y'all three gotta be together. Please. I mean, I wish you'd tell the network that. Yeah, but. Nigga, see, like, yeah, yeah, if you say that, that now, shit. we gonna get it in a So now, I'm gonna keep, next keep, running this let's keep it a stack, though. Again. I understand how it goes. No, no, let's keep it a I gotta pay for that. Yeah. But I, I kinda, wanna see I that work. You got a lot of money. And that's what I'm saying. I just invited the nigga to be on the episodes. Well, that means we're gonna have to charge you a lot more because we know you got more than you can spend. That's right, that nigga right there. Oh, you but have a uh, point. No. Before you go, Nick, I got to ask so you this, man. You have so much money. I got to ask you this. We do got to, because we'll be in here, nigga, forever. Forever. But, like, I'm a big, big, like, proponent of what you said about the freedom of, you know, being able to say what you want and manipulating the media before hey. you, like. Before they get you. Before they get you, but. Like, Los always say shit to me, like, all the time. He said, man, I wish Chico, I would go on shit and say ridiculous shit like you be saying. Nigga, you know how much shit you avoiding by saying the shit you say out loud? <laughs> but for you, nigga, you take it to another level. Like, yeah. I got on the breakfast club and said, I don't never want to be married or be in a relationship. <laughs> and I'd have been saying this shit for years. Right, right, But right, when right. I said it on the breakfast club, nigga, you should have seen the comments. And yeah. I'm talking about, hey, it was crazy. Here. Nigga, you be saying shit, and I be like, bro, this is beyond honesty. Like, this nigga got to be fucking with somebody. Like, what is you, as best as you can explain before we roll, what yeah. is your perspective on relationships with women? Oh, shit, nigga, we going to be here. We, that's another episode. I got to no, come no, back. No, well, but well, I'm talking about leading to the it, next episode. It's energy, man. At the end of the day, whatever makes you happy, I, I, that's what I offer. You know what I mean? And luckily... And God has aligned me and blessed me to be able to do whatever I want to do, however I want to do it, and can't nobody tell me nothing. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to love, I offer, I'm, I'm 100% from the gate. I can say, yo, I can elevate you. I can take you to places you ain't never been before, but you got to trust me. And you got, it's going to be a different level of freedom, like to where I'm so confident in who I am, and hopefully the, the, the woman I'm dealing with is so confident in who she is that we can operate on some new shit and we don't got to get stuck in these old school, traditional, colonialism type of scenarios. So I'm like, look, you move how you want to move, I move how I want to move, but I'm going to be offering so much, I'm going to be so much of a protector and a provider that you ain't going to miss a step. And then so from there, you, you don't everybody, everybody don't go for the shit. Right, right. You right. know, but and I got to take those sacrifices that pretty much like, all right, we built, we had time on on this planet at, at a certain frequency where we was vibing, but you want different things out of life. I, the women who want the white picket fences and, you know, the, the monogamy, they're amazing women for a certain type of nigga. Right. I want somebody who want more than that. I don't want somebody who is who wants ownership. I want somebody who can grow and build some shit together. I've been saying this shit for years. <laughs> I've been saying this shit for years, motherfuckers. And your jewelry looking like they started to believe They're calling me crazy. No, this is not. Ain't got nothing to do with that, nigga. That's a bill. But like to hear you say that at the level that you at, it's like you know what I mean. Okay, 
there is a, 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 a level you can get to as a man and not be my restricted. granddaddy was like that like and his granddaddy like it, yeah. it, it, it was run our family but it, but i say this to say it's not a scenario to where it's i mean as Carlos would say pimping and giving them game. It's actually real life shit. Right. Like it's, it's my coach. That's the game. But, but, but when you when I say you can be Pimpin happier, is just how you play it. Here, here you go. You can be happier over here. Right. You know what I mean? It's that's that's pimping. Proper information motivates people. Hey, positive images making moves. Mike making power moves. Yeah, yeah you see what I'm saying? But but. Hey, what's up, Lexington, Kentucky? August the 26th. I'm pulling up at the Lexington Opera House. I might be on a thoroughbred horse. Something that you can pull up to the Kentucky Derby with, but that, that's neither here nor there. Make sure you click the link, go to the website and get the tickets. And if you don't, I'm gonna be highly disappointed in you. This is Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, pull up. And it ain't a lot of shit to do in Lexington. It might be that weekend, I ain't checked, but this weekend, come see me and then do the other shit when I leave. Shit, <laughs> we need this money. At the end of the day, we gotta sell out this tour, man. Shit. What's up, what's up, what's up? These are not our clothes, these are not our cars, but we will be in Huntsville, Alabama. On what? The 19th. There you go. October 19th. Yeah, yeah, October 19th. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, October 19th. October 19th. Uh -huh. Stand up live, Huts. Huntsville, Alabama. Hello. All our people, all our Alabamians, uh, you know. Oh, I got a special guest coming. I already talked to him. Carly Russell will be in the oh, building. Okay, yes, okay, look, check this out, check oh, this out, check this out. Not only is Carly Russell coming, Nick Saban. We also oh. having a meet and greet where you're gonna be able to see us. You're gonna be able to kick it with Carly. Carly gonna host the search party yeah. afterwards. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. And that you baby, that baby gonna be there too. The baby, we found the baby. That baby, we found the baby. That baby, yeah. That Turns baby. out he's okay. not a baby at all, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not a baby. It was now. She it said on me. the highway. It was not a baby. <laughs> He had on no, she had on no pants and a shirt. Yeah. And I was doing this day is that I'm gonna do yeah. at the meet and greet. Yeah. When you get back there and you see me doing yeah. this, ladies, just follow me. Yeah. You the only Man. person I seen let the ladies do body shots off you. Yeah. yeah. You, you real freaky, y'all. So okay. if that's what you went to. Well, Man, what? Hey, no. This is family business tour, and that's yeah. not my family business. I be the left by that time. <laughs> but when Nav start dressing like Donald Duck, that's when I leave. That's why you gotta get them tickets mm -hmm. at 85 mm -hmm. South Show. Com. 85 South Show dot com. Stand up October 19th. Huntsville. Huntsville, Alabama. Alabama. Carla Russell, Understand Fort Wayne. Uh, you know, we're gonna, into, we're, we're gonna get into we we gonna get into all Master. of the all the children and all they that. Your perspective. Part two. Part two. We'll, 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 we'll say that for the next. The ladies and all that. The next time. Part two. The next time. Hey, maybe we know you say some wrong shit. Man, we know you straight. We ain't gonna let you edit it out over here. No, I'm sorry. We wouldn't let you say nothing crazy. We know you're extremely busy. We appreciate you stopping through here and yeah, fucking so with see. us, man. I like it. We're 10 deep in there. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Let's get a picture right quick before yeah, we ride yeah. out. Ow. Oh, that was a good one. OG, we appreciate you, man. Come on, yeah. Hell yeah. That's real shit. Let's.